guys like you good yeah. Close them up. Close them. Close the doors. Okay. Here we go.
Okay, good.
All right, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls and race fans of all shapes and sizes, you're in Towson Valley. 10.30 is our new start time. 10.30 is our start time for the Towson World Championships, day three of three. We do want to remind you all that are standing around doing something, that uh, working on wellness, that's a nonprofit charity benefiting children in the greater New Mexico area, they got a raffle going on, and you, too, can be part of that raffle. $10 gets you a raffle ticket. It also gets you a cowbell for a limited time. That's right, more cowbell. The drawing starts at noon. You can get your tickets in Kachina Sports, which is in the bottom left-hand corner, depending on where you're uh, looking. It could be to the right of you, it could be in back of you, it could be in front of you. But find Kachina Sports, get your $10 raffle ticket and your cowbell, which is good for cheering on the racing. Drawing starts at noon. Need not be present to win, but your name and your info on it, and we'll draw a whole bunch of them. According to Ojefe here, $26,000 in prizes. Yes, that's right. I'm not reading that wrong. $26,000 in prizes. It's going to Working on Wellness. It's a nonprofit charity benefiting children in greater New Mexico area. So go to Kachina Sports in the building that the speakers are on top of. And uh, the drawing starts at noon. Again, a cowbell, $10 raffle tickets. Go do it. Do it, I say. 10.30 is the start time. Nice to have you all here. Put the sunscreen on. And... Uh, Stay hydrated. Elevation is here. Sunshine is here. Spring is in the air. Good luck to all the athletes out there today. We'll be back with the start of the competition at 10.30.
stores. Go ahead. Two minutes. Yep, two to three. Let me get clearance. Two minutes. That way we don't have to worry about commissions and stuff. Okay. Cool. Right, you ready? Hi, my name is Tina RB. Come on. Amy, you're there. Let's go. Nice. <laughs> Correct, on blue. Hayden, Randy. John Randy. Go ahead. We're going to do POV on blue course in about two minutes. Are we clear? Uh, I don't know if there's guys working on jump two or not. Um, anybody have eyes on jump two? John. Again? John. Okay, Randy. Uh, Well, hey, Mark, Mark, we're going to run a POV here. Look on the screen, would you there? Blue skies, blue goggles, blue kit, blue course ready. And that is Tuva Norby. Tuva had great success with her sister yesterday. The Norby sisters went 2-3. Uh, Tuva took second. Uh, Kaya took third. And right now what we're going to do is a course description. She's got a camera that's all mic'd up right there. And this gives us a perspective. And you folks at home that uh, she's not only a good skier, but she's gonna break down, she's gonna ski and talk at the same, same time. I have a hard time sitting and talking at the same time. That's Kevin Clark's voice you hear. I'm Uncle Lee. We're talking about a lot of racing today, and it's nice to have you here for day three. Clarky, what did you get into last night, buddy boy? We had d d pizzas back at the, at the Hill Crew house. Yeah. Chris Neary from CB did some steaks over at his place, so we had we had a the moving party. It's a, it's a, it was a portable feast, as we did. So take a look at yesterday's results in the World Pro Ski Tour standings for the women. It's Aaron Mozinski that so still holds on to the lead with 126 points and over twenty-five thousand dollars in money. And yesterday, too, of Norbe moved up a few spots as she faced off against Aaron. She's at 108 points. And then Caitlin Harsh with 81 points, right behind her, their top four. In the overall standing, Sarah Rask. So let's take a look at the World Championships overall standings. So after Paula's win yesterday, she has 40 points. Tuva has 30 points. Tuva's sister, Kaya, has 35 points, and then it's Trish Mangan, your top four in the overall world championship standings, Uncle Lee. So that's that's a lot to take in for people that don't know. We're going to keep on reiterating it, and if you just don't tune into any of that, show up at the award ceremony, right? And their big checks will be given out with names on it, right? That's correct. So that's it. Pretty simple. World championships right now, Paula Moulton leads for the ladies behind, or right behind us, Tuba Norbe and Kaya Norbe and Trish Mangan. So they're in the hunt. Does anybody stop the charge of Paula Moltzin? The men are going to get ready to go here pretty quick as we take a look at the men's overall world championship standings. So we'll look at that real quick. We'll, to we'll toss the break. Sam Mass leads away with 35 points. Raphael Hauser second with 30 points. Reto Schmidinger with 25 points. And Alexander Schmidt. So... Those are your top four. They're in the battle for the overall big money out there. 20 grand in the pocket of Sam Mays. We're going to throw it a break and be back with you with the first run. Oh, we're going to go to the POV with Tuba, as Uncle Lee was mentioning. So up we go to Tuba. Okay, copy. Okay, copy. We're gonna go. Here we go. Red course ready. Blue course ready. Yeah. 
Here we go. There you go, Tim. It's changed. Yeah, it's changed. Oh, so I'm up against the week show. Yeah, we had two pull out. Luke and Luke and Miha. Oh, now you get to watch yeah. me go down. I'm trying to get him <laughs> I lost on my team. I was really bad. Yeah, can I uh, adjust my horizon? All right, so Tuva Norby, the Norwegian who had nice success yesterday finishing second place, walked away there with a point of view. She had a camera attached to her chest, some audio as well, and that's a great perspective that we normally don't get where she's usually shooting straight at it. But uh, Tuva, thanks so much for your dedication to all things ski racing. We're five minutes out now, Mr. Clark, five minutes out from the start of the third and final day of the third stop here. You've been enjoying yourself on tour? Oh, yeah, it's, we deserve this weekend. We have just been battling the elements as we did when we arrived here. 50 inches of new snow the first three days of the week, making it a challenge to get the course prepared. But the guys here at Tau stepped up, Bert, and all the guys, the yellow coats, of Vanilla, and our good friend Tomas. He's our MacGyver here at Tau. So he had tools and, and hardware to modify the start doors so we put this big block of wood behind the kick plates to bring it forward for the slalom they just removed that kick plate this morning as we watch on the screen matt rogers one of our crew randy patson up there closing the doors so that that lengthened the distance so now they have their gs skis on for our gs portion of the weekend ripping fast over the jumps this is going to be super exciting on this bluebird day let's talk about the sponsors uh, out on course, we are in the in the tent area. You know what I saw on that last screenshot we had there was was Jägermeister. It said uh, cold shots here, right there. So you can go down there and you can actually get a Jäger shot. It might, is that correct? We're we're kind of waiting a little bit this morning. <laughs> I went down and tested it though, and it's running well. It is okay. <laughs> it's pouring yeah. smooth. You right know. alongside Jaeger <laughs> is our Susan Jacobson. There's World Pro Ski Tour merch tent. Stop over there. All kinds of great merchandise for you to. Pick up our good friends from Revo. They've been they were selling goggles like mad. They had these Revo goggles with a towel strap on it, and they were going like hotcakes. They, they though, you know, there's a there's a personability that's uh, that's really cool about that, and you you're, pr you're proud. To, well, that's a bright light. Uh, better put my glasses on. Uh, it's a bright, uh, but, but my Revo's on there. But uh, yeah, thanks to to Revo for their support and love. And how about Peak Skis? For anybody that's paying attention right now, you can go on to the Facebook page, the World Pro Ski Tour. Facebook page, click on the Peak Skis giveaway, and we're giving away one pair each day. And uh, do that, we want to thank Bodie Miller, Andy Worth, Chris Davenport, JT Holmes, and Michelle Parker. That's kind of the, the five pack that make up that, that company. They're really making a dent in the industry. I got three pair of them, and they ski very well, Kevin. Also, our friends from DNA Vibe out there in the tent line, check it out. Help me recover from my meniscus surgery last year. And so many of the athletes using DNA to recover from a hard day of skiing and injuries. So go check out DNA Vibe. I understand you're gonna get your feet taken care of well by Surefoot oh. as well on the rest of this road trip, right? Yeah, that's my plan, see if I can get myself a nice set of footbeds. Got a collapsing metatarsal, according to the experts. A collapsing <laughs> metatarsal. Did you know that uh, <laughs> your feet and your hands make up more than half the bones in your body? Did you know? 
I know now. You okay, are the I'm keeper see. of all crazy uh, facts. Yeah, this is okay. We're, we're born with <laughs> 300 bones in our bodies. It takes up to six years for our bones to all fuse together. How many bones are there in the average human being after the age of six? Yeah, Bob knows. Bob knows. How I'll give you a hint. I'll give you a hint, Kevin. It's between 205 and 207. I'm leaving it alone. As many as there are <laughs> hairs on your wig. Yes. I, I, I got an autograph yesterday. And I didn't wash it. The, the governor oh, you didn't the, wash the it. Governor signed my bald head yesterday. Yeah, that was, was a good a time. We had super fun with the governor. She came in here and hung out with us for a few rounds, and she was a great sport out skiing all morning with Tamron. McKinney and Pam Fletcher, they got her primed, and we let her have it. Yeah, that, <laughs> that chair left right there with Pam, Tamara, and the governor. I mean, the governor could talk. Like, we're talkers because we get paid to do such. But the governor, she was she was on point. She, she had was. lots to say. She was ready for every curveball you threw her. <laughs> yeah, you could throw some curveballs, my friend. She was a little mighty mouse for sure. <laughs> hey, Mazda's done a bang-up job. You, you you broke down yesterday when we had Chris Hill here, broke down your road trip here. You got to go during the daylight hours. You took photos. You got to enjoy that CX-50. Talk to us again about that vehicle. Yeah, just a super road trip. Stopped in front of Pikes Peak, took some video of the car, sent it to our Facebook page, and there's that trainer jet, U.S. Air Force trainer jet, about halfway down here in the middle of nowhere. Yeah, Pulled over I there, talked about the sport mode. I said, thing goes like a jet. Then I pushed off and made my way down, and like you did dodge the wild horses. <laughs> yes, those were horses. down the gun barrel. <laughs> it was pretty, pretty frightening. You came at night, which must have been, you, you were pretty much shattered from that. Oh, was... But what a, great, uh, what a great time with the CX-50. Mark, one of our crew members, lived up the steep road at this beautiful house he was staying at with Joe Downing, one of our another course guys. Eight inches of new snow, climbed up there like it was nothing. Like it ain't no it, thing. That thing did spin a wheel the whole time I was here, just bowled right through the snow. We were, you know, following the bucket loaders up here and past them, and it's just been a, a great, great automobile. Super comfortable. The seats are amazing. Sound system. I got my, my Spotify coming in through the sound system, so that was super fun. And Oh, oh, look at this right here. Well... It, it would be great if sponsors just popped out of nowhere, but a guy named Dan Flavin brokered the right deal here, with Mazda. Mazda is one of our key top-tier integral sponsors, and we want to thank Dan for his hard work. Chris Hill, Brad Audit from uh, Ode from uh, Mazda are actually here with significant others having a wonderful time. We also have some VIPs. We have Marin and Dave Stute. Am I saying that name right? It's Stutt. It's Stutt. It's a short name, and it's hard to pronounce. It's, it's only two ways to go, and, of yeah, course, I butchered yeah, it. It's okay. But, but I understand you have two. You have three children here. One, Marin is, is here. Marin, you, you injured your wings, so you will not be forerunning. Uh, uh, how, how is your experience here at Tao so far? It's been a lot of fun. Really cool to watch some of the people I watch on um, the World Cup, like uh, Paula and Trisha, and to watch my brothers uh, ski. That's not right. Your brothers, uh, how old are they, and what are their names? Uh, my brother CJ is 16, and my brother Dane is 12. And they get the honor of uh, doing some forwarding up there. Are you a little envious? Yeah, very envious. <laughs> it took a year to get your turn. You had a, you injured your wing, your your collarbone in the last the last race of the year. Better than the first race, right? Yeah, I'm, I'm glad that I had a good season and it was the end, so it was fine. Does these type of events coming here, and I, obviously you can't speak for your brothers, but you as a, as a young racer, right, does this inspire you? Does it kind of like get your juices going and say, I can do that, I want to do that someday? Oh, definitely. It's just a lot of fun to watch, and uh, it's just really ex inspiring to see um, pro athletes, and I would like to be like that one day. Are you going to get some autographs? Yeah. Yeah, I like it. Okay, Dad, you got three kids breaking the bank but dedicated to ski racing, right? Oh, my. First off, just thanks to Dan Flavin and uh, World Pro Ski Tour for letting us come out and do this. And uh, it's been fun. Yep. These kids have been racing for many years now at uh, Pine Knob Ski Resort in Clarkston, Michigan uh, for a pinnacle ski racing. And it's it's been a riot. It's really cool to see them uh, rub shoulders with some pro athletes. And we've got some great photos. All the athletes have been very very, very friendly and, and gracious for stopping and talking. So thanks very much for that. That, that is awesome. I know you're stoked on all the new snow because from what I saw, the UP in that area did not get a lot of snow. All your resorts are pretty much closed already, right? Oh, man, we had, we had to chase snow all winter. Uh, but, uh, you know, they figured it out. It was a good year. Fantastic. Well, it just so happens on the blue course, we have your son, D uh, Dane. And then who's on the red course, Kev? Oliver Mosby about ready to come out of the start doors. So on the red course side, little breeze picking up there. Another beautiful bluebird day to wrap up the World Pro Ski Tour Championships, the World Championships. Lots of money to hand out today. Cool, super cool drone shot. Beautiful yeah, that's, angle up there. Yeah. 
That's Corey Tibliss. Corey is a master of flying that drone. He is, uh, even with the, with the gusty winds, he's able to do it. He said, I think last year we talked, he said up to 40, 45 miles an hour winds, he's still able to keep that thing in control. And that, that that's a fantastic shot right there. One question for you, Dad, does it still get yeah. you some nerves in the system when you see your kids in the Stargate? Oh man, this is such a tough sport for a parent to watch, but I love it. And, and they just keep getting after it. So yeah, that's my boy there on the left in the blue. Uh, you know, he's getting, uh, he's excited about this. So he, Dan had him out there learning how to go over these jumps and it was fun to watch. Do you think by chance, Dean's looking over at Oliver saying, uh, I got you. Is there any crap talking going on up there? Well, Oliver got him yesterday, so we'll see what happens okay. here today. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Payback time as we get ready to send our forwards. The purpose of the forerunners is to test the timing. This is the elimination rounds of GS. So as you stand behind those big electronic magnet, high, heavy gauge aluminum doors, 1,200 pounds of force holding those guys back. So the rock back and the tails that are skis you see just before they go, and then you lean on the poles and give yourself a big push out of the start. <laughs> Drop into the course, two jumps, and then when they cross the finish line, the first athlete across the line will start the clock. The second athlete across the line will stop the clock. That's where we get our differential. So the purpose of these four runners is to test that timing and get the young athletes involved, getting super psyched on it. I'm a U16 coach back east, and when we started this back in 2017, I had all my U16s training so they could, they already could high clear it. A set of twins that weren't any more than 5'2". They went out of the start, their first race in 17, these kids are high clearing, the pros are standing there at the start going, I can't do that. <laughs> That's good coaching right there. That's good super coaching. Fun. Hey, Dane, awesome. if you can hear us up top, put your, uh, put your right hand in the air. Dane, can you hear us? He's just making eye contact with Oliver over there. He's just like, I'm, I got you. You're not taking me down again, no way. Super focused <laughs> as they get ready to go. Big pressure on these young guys to come out. The track is perfect up there. We tilled the hill last night, thanks to Wes and the guys in the snowcats here. You know, they've got the only electric snowcat in the country here in Taos. That is, that's Super that's impressive. Cool. And as the governor was talking about zero emissions and a, a neutral carbon footprint yesterday, that is very important. That's the that's the future. There was a lady that was working for another energy drink company that went back to school to start working for uh, the, the environment, come up with environmental studies. And she is now one of the leaders at all the resorts uh, around North America. So if you kids out there that are listening and interested in doing something, environmental studies and uh, wellness for the earth is a great way to go about it. Let me ask you this, young lady. What are you interested in outside of ski racing? What would you like to pursue as far as a career? Uh, I'd like to be a dentist one day. My dad's a dentist, so I've just been um, kind of in that community exposed to that. That's why the teeth are looking so good. Okay, great dentist jokes. What are the only teeth you're supposed to floss? <laughs> There's lots of ones you want to keep. That's right, just the ones you want to keep. That is it. Where'd they invent the toothbrush? <laughs> Not Maine. West Virginia, anywhere else we call it a teeth brush. <laughs> That's right. That's it. That's all I got right there. Uh, uh, if we're online and anyone's from West Virginia, I apologize right there. <laughs> no, I didn't. No, not at all. There's nothing but the facts. <laughs> nothing but the facts. All right, we digress as we get ready for the four runners. Again, the yellow coats and everybody here in Taos doing an amazing job keeping this moving along. We've been blessed with these three bluebird days to wrap up our season. This is outstanding. See the guy standing with his hands in his pocket with a camera to his right there? That is Price Weatherall. Price, how you doing, buddy boy? Yeah. There you go. It's working. Take, take a, bow, a bow, baby. Take a bow. Oliver, so up? good story about Price. You, I don't have the hat with me today, him? but we were over in China for the Olympics, and he, he had this hat. You pull the top down, and it creates goggles over your eyes. And he took a picture of it, put it on, online. I said, I want one of those. Five months later, he brought one home. He had one with me, and he showed up at the Pro Tour. He goes, here's your hat. I'm like, thank you. So, Price, thanks for bringing a hat from around the world from uh, the 2022 Olympics. While we wait, I've got Marin here. Marin, would a, a dream, when well, you folks online watching at home, there's the, there's the brackets. We had to do them a little differently. It's the round, that's the round of 32, so 16 on each side, and eventually we'll get to the final two. But, uh, Marin, would it be a dream of yours to get to the Olympics someday? Oh, definitely. It'd be a long shot, but a lot of fun. But you're saying there's a chance. Maybe. That's right. You can, spend, you can thank your OG sponsors. As, uh, as I've announced, a lot of kid races, as you, you do as well, a lot of the kids in the bios thank their parents. And at this point, we want to thank all the parents, including you, sir, that got your kids into this, because you're the OG, the original gangster sponsors that get your kids from point A to point B. 
And you were mentioning, uh, D Dave, just a minute ago, the nerves. My son was uh, on the high school surf team down in Southern California. He was uh, part of the Big Wave Posse. There was a day called Big Wednesday back in 2016. Um, 20 to 30 foot faces at the wedge in Newport. And I watched him uh, sit out there for two hours, right? And these, there's no way you're going out to get him. He's got to catch something to come in. And these faces were... Um, again, 20 to 30, 30 foot face. I've never been so nervous watching <laughs> any human being, let alone your son, right there trying to come in. So I know those nerves you speak of. Yeah, it's tricky, you know, just watching them uh, come over a pitch and just hoping they can stay on an edge and finish a race and have a smile, right? That's what you're looking for. That's it. And, you know, we never like to see the injuries. We wish you nothing but the best, Marin, on your recovery. It'll make you, make you stronger. And Clarky, I believe we're working on some dye on the course right now. We want to make sure it's uh, taken care of properly. Is that right? Yeah, that's correct. So delineating the finish line and the takeoff and landing area. Not any trouble with flat light today. Bluebird, super clear conditions. Good visuals on the track. The surface as it changes. Everybody's going to keep watching that. And... Uh, well, you know, this is rare. We have this much time with uh, a sister and a father here. Marin, any, anything you'd like to say to Dane since he can hear you up there? We'd like to wish him good luck. Would you like to tell an embarrassing story? Um, yeah, actually. <laughs> Our first well. race of the season, he had a great first run. Um, he was definitely nervous. Second run, he actually fell at like, the second to last gate, got a concussion. It was it was fun watch. <laughs> fun, fun for it. Fun to watch, but not fun to be a part of, right there. <laughs> and how did you, how did you injure your wing? Um, it was a slalom race at a qualifier up in the UP, and I came over the pitch a little too fast and ran into a gate and fell downhill. Gate jumped out at you. Yeah. What was, what was the lesson learned there? Um, you just gotta keep in control. <laughs> Yeah, we saw some gates getting run to yesterday, didn't we, Kevin? A little, Kev? too, little too direct, as you say. So we'll watch the athletes, see what they have at GS. It's going to be super quick. We're going to toss to a short break. We'll be back with our four runners and a round of 32 here at Taos. We're inching closer to the start. We'll have our forerunners, Dane. It's Stutt. You got it. Yeah, Dane Damn. Stutt. CJ will be going too, but Dane's gonna go first. He's on the blue course along with Oliver Mosby. Uh, a lot of little pieces of the puzzle have to be put together in order for the race to start. So we thank the entire course working staff, the Talos Valley, and all the World Pro Ski Tour. Look at the lights. They're changing colors. They're gonna go at the same time. Kevin Clark, take it away. I right, track these two guys. Go. Good even start by both of them. Try to get that high line, especially up top there. Serious pitch. They've got a perfect track. Goes four on a. Gleese says, great angulation, off the jump, Dean. Dane is on the left-hand side, got Dad and Sis with nervous energy behind us. I'm liking the angulation on the blue course. And did he just miss a gate? No, no, it's no? just a super straight through there. Okay. It's deceiving, just like in the slalom. To get, that, to get that course to run equally on both sides, there's a straight gate in there. 
So again, yeah. BDC, look at him drop, drop, drop it down, down the get this done. Get these over all of them. Mariner, what do you got to say to you, bro? Nice job, Dave. Way to send it. Uh, there, you there, you there you go. There's there's a love from your, your sister. Nice, nice job, job, Dane. And, and Mr. Mosby, good looking race and way to keep it upright. Dynamite out of sight. He won that by 3.374. And now, Mr. Uh, uh, CJ Stute, the yeah, older brother of uh, Dane, who just went. Uh, he's over on the blue course. Will Saylor is on the red side. Yeah, these are another pair of forerunners. So. All right, Dad, he can hear you up top. Anything you want to say? Let's go, to CJ. CJ. Outside pressure, buddy. Okay. Let's see it. Here we go. Red course ready. All right, CJ Red. Stude on the blue, blue course. course Will pounded his chest up there. He's getting so pumped up. Oh, King Kong style. I like it. And the gate drop. Here we go. All right, down the pitch they go. Good clean start, long, tall, young athletes. So they don't look like U the U18s. CJ's, uh, he'll be starting his second year U18. Very nice, look at the angles, nice. Stacked up nicely, get high edge angle, top of the turn. Releasing the ski quickly into the alley they go. So here's the deceiving part. While the racer on the blue course, CJ thinks he's got the advantage. Will will take that back, maybe on the red course side, looks like CJ's getting it done, but here comes Will charging hard, just like yesterday in the slalom. Across Ooh. the line they go. What do you see, Kev? That's a close one. So, zero, three, three. Whoa, three one hundredths of a second. Okay, sis, what do you want to say to your brother? Good job, CJ. Nice, nice turn. Gets to keep that, uh, that, that jersey as well, hanging out on the wall. Dad, anything you want to say to your kids? Hey, man, that was fun to watch. It's, uh, it's more fun. Well done. So, the two uh, Stut brothers, Stut brothers, are uh, wrapping things up. They'll be joined in the finish corral by Sister Marin and Father Dave. We want to thank you guys so much for being here. High fives. Thanks High a lot. fives. Hey, you're very welcome. Yeah, pleasure to have you here. Head out that way. Go get some, uh, go get some autographs from your kids. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, that's good stuff right there. Good to have it being a family affair. Skiing, one of the best, if not the best, family sport. You can slide and glide down the hill, jump on the chairlift, have a nice lunch together. My mom used to pack peanut butter and jellies and, uh, and chocolate milk. And I just love the whole family vibe that goes on in this sport of skiing. So okay, what's up now? Are you Uncle Lee? Okay, here we go. So Luke, P Luke, uh, Luke Winters pulled out of the competition. He took a ride yesterday. So Peter Alfus was going to be our alternate racing against Sam Mays. And Peter has not showed up. So we're going to see Sam Mays, your champion from yesterday from Belgium, with a solo run on the red course. He'll go back up and give a shot at the blue course, just get a feel for the GS track. So we'll watch the Belgian. I'm disappointed that Peter's not here because he was our... our uh, Post 50 athlete, our only post 50 from Aspen, so we're hoping that he's okay. But here goes Sam, he's gonna get a solo shot, one at a time. So all eyes will be on Sam as he goes solo here. So again, Luke Winters pulled out of the competition. We we uh, had an alternate, but Peter was not available to take his alternate run, so you're watching Sam right now. Sam's running at about 75%, just wanted to get feel for the course, feel for the snow. So yesterday's champion on a solo run, hard right footer into the bottom jump, running clean and smooth, making it look easy. Pro from Belgium, yesterday's winner in the slalom portion. Again, a solo run for him. Now we'll go to our first runs. Going to be George Steffi and Adrian Mason from Germany, two rookies. Yeah, that's the beauty of this. You can show up after your NCAA season, after the World Cup season, and get after it. George Steffi over on the red of course, course where of course, Adrian Messen, the German from Garmisch, Germany. He's got that, the flowing Fabio locks that give him strength, and they are off and at it at the same time. U.S. team versus the German Looks team. Like he gets to jump over the blue course side. Steffi right there with him in the GS portion, a little bit low, losing the ski for Steffi. He tries to keep it real red, runs wide off that top jump. We'll figure it out after a run or two, but... Really got to get that direction. Just perfect coming off the jump. Into the turn they go. We see the blue pull away. Let's see what happens today here in the GS at the bottom of the red course side. We see a pickup really quick right here. Can Steffi close the gap at the finish line? Looks like he's going to be the German crossing first with the advantage by a 1-6-6. Six, six. Going through Mason, the rookie German. 1-6-6. Six, six. Their first run in the round of 32. And then it's Philippe Horchek and Ivan. Nice, go ahead, Uncle Lee, with our intros on these two. Here's a look at the replay again of the finish. Nice, close, well, there's them coming out of the finish. 
Uh, but uh, .166, it's a blink of an eye. It's always a little bit better when you slow it on down. Yeah, Steffi got, got left a little bit in the start. He'll figure that out. The yep. Whiskey team, George Steffi. All right, let's go on with Fjordcheck from the ready. Czech Republic. Not afraid to go fast. Great success so far on this tour. He's going up against UNR Ski Team Zone, Iver Ness. Oh, on track they go. It's going to be Fjordcheck, who's your fastest qualifier. Oh, he's lost a pole in the start. One pole missing there. What could Fjordcheck do with one pole? They seem to affect him so far. He flies high and wide as Steffi did on the red course side. Starting to work it on the blue. The nation's looking from Norway. So, here we go. Down in his top. Fjordcheck, your fastest qualifier. Trying to close the gap with one pole in hand. The other one back at the start. Got stuck when he came out of the gate. Tore it out of his hand. It's going to be the blue course win across the line. And that was Iver with a win by 289. Good job for Forcheck to keep it close with one pole. Distracting when you come out of the start with only one pole, your head games begin. Yeah, but the way to stick with it, and that opens up the door for Ivor Ness. He's going to hold on to that lead as they go into the next round, because as we mentioned, Forcheck fastest qualifier. Let's move on. Tenge Neff with one F. He's on the red course. Christian Sovek is on from Norway on the blue course. Sovek, current Red money leader on the Blue tour, had great success, two firsts, two seconds in the top eight yesterday. Here we go, Neff from Switzerland on the red, Sovek, Norway oh, on the blue. Track. They come down the first few turns, Blue Course getting the jump there. So Sovek leaving, leaving it behind, a little trouble on the Red Course side for Tangy. He loses that outside ski, here comes your tour leader, putting a hammer down in this first run of the round of 32. For the men, the giant slalom force of the World Championships. Women will start after the men finish that second run. And out, out in front, front Sobek, Sobek putting, putting a hammer the down. Over. That's at the line. line. So, so big, big win, win there. there. So, so maximum back. differential today is 0. 0.7. So Sovic has a 0. 0.7 advantage over Tangy Neff after that first run. It's, go back and switch courses. And it's looking as if that blue course right now, for the time being, has a little more uh, quickness to it. But hey, that, that everyone's ready. gonna get a chance to blue slice it and dice it evenly. Let's go on now to Switzerland. Arnaud Bosset, he is on the blue course with the red, the Joker, Michael Ankeny. Ankeny leaves him behind when Ankeny with a super powerful start, but he's right there with him. Bosset makes the moves, try to close the gap on Ankeny. See how Ankeny takes his bottom jump. These guys are flying a little bit wide. High Ankeny right on the gates on the red course side. Ankeny making the turn here where the red blue course starts to pull away. Both setting out on the lead. Ankeny down in his bullet trying to get some energy out of the ski and still keeps him. You're going over the bottom bump. Blue course touch it down first. Ankeny trying to close the gap at the bottom here. There's going to be another blue win there. So blue course, 0 0.271, but he'll get a shot. So with two runs in each round, he'll go back to the top and switch courses as we take a look at the next pair as we move through this first round of round of 32. What a little rerun there. So Hank and he having a solid run, but at this point, looks like that blue course a little bit quicker, like you mentioned. So we'll see as it progresses. But that's a great thing about dual elimination. You get a shot on that other course. Red course ready. Even in all. Blue out. course ready. Now it's Benny Anger. -er. That's Benny Anger -er going up against Mr. Enzo Centrelli. It's France versus Austria on course. So a couple of rookies trying to time those doors, banging against them, slowing them down on the red course side. Is Centrelli Anger -er out in front, touching down wide, wide for Cinerelli as he comes off that jump. Not too much direction change. He tries to settle in on the red course side around the bend they go. Blue looking good, looking clean, looking fast. Cinerelli on the red still trailing. As Angler on the Austrian crosses the line first with the advantage, which will be maximum again, 0 0.70. So right now, Kevin, it is all blue course considerably quicker because these are uh, all some talented racers in the mix but again we're going to go back up swap sides and make it happen one more time it's time for the fast spaniard alex puente tasillas he will be featured on the red course the spaniard he's going to go up against laurie taylor from great britain celebrated a birthday back in feb he's 28 years young representing boston stoke great britain on course on a track we go to see us the spaniard with the green suit on the red course down the pitch they go taylor on that Blue course side, limited in advantage. 
The Spaniard throws it way down the hill, even it up here. This could be a red course win, as close as he is coming through the end to the alley section. As they make the turn into the jump, the red course picks up some pace. So over the bottom jump they go. It's like still going to be another win on the blue course side. Not by much though. Point two three zero two three zero going to Taylor. Taylor bro brought up skiing dry slope skiing in Aldershot. His course is his course at home or his his home turf nine seconds long. That was a <laughs> you got to get a lot of laps in. Yeah, count. he moved to New Zealand when he was 11, and back-to-back uh, -back winners till he was 18. Blue That's Lurie. Let's move Blue on now. Ready. We're gonna go on with Jake Jacobs uh, from the USA, Alexander Schmid. Jacobs in the red, Schmid in the blue. On it. Nice strong start by Jacobs. He's gonna need it against Schmidt. Schmidt so fast yesterday. So he was fourth yesterday. First run of the GS. Jacobs keeping it close, little back on his heels there, off the jump, nice line off the jump by Jacobs as he tries to chase down the World Cup game German. Good job by Jacobs, around the turn they go, he'll get a shot on the blue course side as they make that turn. It's all about Schmidt, he touches down with the advantage, Jacobs trying to close the gap as best he can on the red course side, a long to go. And the differential will be max right there, 7-0 going to Schmidt. Yeah, Schmidt just picking up where he left off yesterday, the 29-year-old German. He's a customs officer, 2023 world champion in parallel GS. So the kid has got skills to pay the bills, and he's showing it right there. Let's move on now. It's going to be Simon Spear on the blue course next to Reto Schmidiger. Last year, he had a great success in Aspen, excuse me, in Steamboat and here. Yesterday, I believe it was fourth place for Reto. Third place. Third place, excuse yesterday. me, behind Schmid. And they're locked and loaded. Again, Blue, Simon Spear. Squishy is his nickname. Out on track they go, dropping down the pitch. Looks like Reto gets a little bit of an edge coming out of the start. He's got a little bit more experience like coming out of that start. Good high edge angle, top of the turn, pressure skis. Nice line off that chop jump. We see a lot of wide tracks down there. Guys start to figure that out here as the work goes back to the top. Out in front, in the bully to goes. Red course. It's like we could have a win on the red course on this run. Out front, spray coming off his skis, back into the face of Spear. Spreadle is going to cross the line first and red. Winning it looks like going to be by max differential. Again, 0 .70 advantage for Schmidinger on that next run. Okay. Yeah, it took seven races for the red course to get one, but Reto, no stranger to speed, did just what he needed to do. Back up to the top we go, Kiefer Christensen, 31-year-old, doing it for Team USA, originally from Alaska. He's going up against Adetash's own Patrick Kenny. Uh, my man, Patrick. You, you love that Adetash, yeah, baby. I love Adetash for my whole mountain right, Coach. Blue course ready. New 60s, here we go, all serious business now, and on the track they go. It's going to be Kiefer Christensen on the red course side, Patrick Kenny on the blue. Kenny with a strong, strong start, leaving Christensen behind into the first two turns. It's all Patrick Kenny from the USC team, diving down the pitch. Really trying to get the juice out of the ski. No rush built up there yet. A little bit of soft, slow down low. Gotta get that energy up the top of the turn. Kenny starts to pull away on the blue side. To the alley he goes. He will have the advantage as he stretches out the shorter distance until we make the turn back on the red side. Kenny out front still, motoring away. On the first of two runs of round 32, it's going to be Patrick Kenny with the win. Looks like it's going to be a match to me. It is another 1.70 going to Patrick Kenny in his first of two runs. Hey, Kenny, nice to see you out and about. Good to see you at the World Cups on American soil this year. Good luck with the rest of your racing out here at the Pro Tour. So, Kenny, he will have himself an advantage going into the next round. Now we're Blue looking at another ready. U.S. team member going up Blue against the Frenchy. It's Jeremy, Jeremy Logier. He is on the left-hand side. Blue course against Rocket River Radimus. Oh, oh a tough Jay. start. Oh, nice trouble oh. up there as he tries to get out on track. Comes up against the doors. They will not open if you try to go early. River Radimus now striding away. Team turns back down to the snow. Working the ski. We got a gate down out there. Two gates down out there. Radimus pounding on the pole as is Ligier trying to make up some ground. Closing in a little bit on the blue course side. But it's all River Radimus at the turn. Radimus touches down with about a half a gate advantage or more as he crosses the line. Let's take a look at the time. And winning it by 927. So it's going to be max differential there. 0.7. Nice job, River. Nice job. So a little uh, disappointed in yesterday's result. He'll see if he can capitalize on get past the round of 32 and past 16. River representing Taos, New Mexico. And there's the hang up on the start that sent Lagier 
uh, way back into the cheap seats. He did a good job of closing the gap up off that serious mistake that can play into your head, but didn't let it bother him. It did what he could to make it up the ground. and did a good job. So back to the top we go, we. Eh? Yeah, sticking to his own game. That's the important thing. And we want to thank all the yellow coats and all the course workers once again, all the TV crew. And Hayden Scott and his entire crew with Eve Productions for making this whole thing come together today. It's Andreas Smith from Norway. Skis out of UNR. His father is from the Taos area. He's going to go up against the German, Roman Frost. And while we have this opportunity, we want to thank CB Sports, Chris Neary and his company and his, and his team for making this all come together, outfitting everybody. We'll be right back with more racing. Stick around here in Taos Ski Valley. Saw Radimus and Jay pounding away in the course, popping a couple gates out of the ground, but we got it back in the ground, ready to go with the next pair. Uncle Lee, who do we got? Andy Boy, Andreas Smith from Norway. He's a business major, all business on the skis right now on the blue side of the course, and Roman Frost, a German on the red course. Oh, excuse me, swap that around. Roman is on the blue, Andreas Smith on the red. Hey, all athletes, all athletes who just raced, all men ready. back up to the blue top. We want to continue this lickety split. We're going Christmas trees, red, 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 green! Out on track they come. Looks like a stronger start for the German over the blue course side, maybe about a ski's length as he drops down the pitch. Clean and smooth, a little bit of a track starting to develop up there. Something to put your foot against. Wide on the blue course side is the German Frost. So Smith on the red, down in his bullet, making the turn. Knows he's got to stay patient, wait for the course to come back to him at the bottom here. It's Frost, the German, touching down with the advantage as he heads for the finish line with a good strong advantage on his first two runs. Across the line goes Frost. So, max differential going to Frost for Andreas Smith. Well, I'll say this is going to be an interesting second round because the blue course is just uh, leaps and bounds faster uh, so far as we're seeing. But anyway, Everyone's going to get a second go at it. We're going back up top now. It's Jan Zabastran from the Czech Republic for Czechia going up against Simon Breitfuss Kammerlander, the Austrian. So the doors open up. It's Simon with the strong start. Hungry. Yeah, Zabastran came up against the doors a little bit there. Let's see what Simone can do today. Not happy with his slalom skiing. Strong in his first of two runs on the blue side. And Simone hammering the way into panels. Simone putting together a solid run. Blue course side. He's making a turn out in front. As Abstran tries to make up some ground on the red, it's going to be Simone making the turn first. He's going to touch down with the advantage on the blue side. Simone by about half to the lead across the line. Here we go with the advantage to Simone. Three, four, two. Simone Breitfuss Camelander. That's good for his confidence. He's had a tough go the last few races, not only here but in Bear Valley as well. So, Simon. Very nice to have you right where you are right now with an advantage of point three four two. They'll go up and swap it around. Let's set the stage for our next battle. It's going to be Great Britain versus against, against Switzerland. It's Billy Major, Great Britain. He's on the red course. Loic Chabelle from Switzerland on the blue. Here we go. Oh, the, the Brit comes up against the doors, trying to figure out the timing on it. Gives up some ground right from the get-go. Well, it's dropped down the pitch with that advantage. German really making some move. Excuse me, the Brit trying to make some moves now. Billy Major to try to make up ground on the red side. He knows you just got to stay focused. You get a shot on the blue side. Don't let it get to your head. Making the turn down in their tuck. They go over the bottom jump. It's still on the blue course. Look with the advantage. Down in his tuck again. Major not that far behind across the line. Goes Lloyd with the win. 9 3 1. So another max differential going out. Yeah, oh, Billy Major, the Great Britain rider out of uh, London, 13th in Kitzbühel in the slalom this year, and a 2022 Olympian. Good to have you here, Billy. And all men back up to the top. All men, get on that new chairlift that they put in place to get you up there faster. And we're going to go to the top now, look at Luis Fassa from Luke Norway. And he, uh, going up against Eric with a K, Reed out of Canada. Dad looking on, and our next race is underway. Good even start by both these guys. They drop down to pitch. Reed on the red course side. 
had some success here last year. Let's see what he has at GS. It looks like fouls over Norway, already the advantage. Only eight gates in, touch it down. Oh, wide he goes on the boot course. It's, it's Bowser now still with the lead. The Norwegian, but here comes the Canadian. He knows he's got some work to do, but stay focused on your own course is the key here. You know you get a crack at the other side in the second run. Boot course touches down first. It's Bowser going to cross the line first. Reed not that far behind. 0.549 for Fauza, 5.49 in their first of two runs here five, in the GS. 5.49er, shout out to Ken Reed, one of the crazy Canucks, raising two kids, Eric and Jeff. Jeffrey not here this year, sadly, but Eric, good luck on your next run. Back up to the top for our final pairing, our 16th duel of the round of 32. This is gonna be Sawyer Matson. Sawyer Matson, late entry. Um, and then Rafael Hasser yesterday, uh, second place on course. So the champion from yesterday gets the jump on Sawyer Matson, who is our alternate. Matson trying to keep it real against one of the top World Cup skiers yeah. from Austria. So good job. Stay focused on his own course. Got to hope for a mistake. Yeah, play, play your own game. So in these earlier rounds, when the matchups are at such a disparity, the fastest go against the slowest as you work through the ladder. The Austrian knows he can probably coast a little bit here, save some energy. Going to be another 10 run day for him. With some serious lactic acid. <laughs> you guys make your way through a three day weekend. Lots of runs. Lots of runs. We want to thank John Franklin and Briar Shriver for all their hard work. Lisa Mutz as well, the entire staff here at World Pro Ski Tour. All men back up to the top. Regardless of how you finish, you're all doing it again. All men back up to the top. A shout out to all the people on the bleachers applying sunscreen to yourselves and your loved ones. Stay hydrated. We'll be back in a minute with more racing. A car like this shouldn't exist. Something this big, this luxurious shouldn't move like a Mazda. And yet, it does. <laughs> oh my God, it sounds epic as well. This car is an SUV with bragging rights. The Free Row Mazda CX-90. For the best deal on the best shed or garage, visit toughshed.com. The best nights start with Jägermeister. Made with 56 botanicals. Always served ice cold. Take a miracle to come back from this. Heartbreaking end of the season. Jägermeister Ice Cold. Jägermeister Ice Cold. Jägermeister Ice Cold. Jägermeister Ice Cold. But what's this? For the moments when anticipation. Fox counting down. Celebration. Jägermeister. Meister the moment. moment. CB Sports is a vintage ski brand that was very popular in the 80s and 90s, created by CB Vaughn, and we are fortunate enough to be able to relaunch that brand into the market in 2022. CB Sports is basically a retro vintage brand from the past being brought into the present. It's got great designs, lines, and features. It's a great old outerwear brand that's made new. In general, ski racing is a pretty tough sport. Racer's ready! Using my DNA vibe has allowed me to train harder, longer, and recover faster. Less days off, more time on the snow, beating my competitors. Having another option to be doing what we love and to continue to race, it just keeps the sport open and keeps you in it. For more than half a century, 
Seiko has been supporting athletes in their efforts to be the best. Now, we want to bring this reliable technology to anyone striving for a goal. Because we understand, a split second can change everything. Keep going forward. Prospects. As the founders of Surefoot, Bob and Russ Shea are obsessed with creating the perfect ski boot for you because they know that a properly fitted custom ski boot will make you a better skier, whatever level you're at. At Surefoot, they've developed a process that guarantees the perfect fit for each customer, and of course, they are obsessed with the process. We have 300 experts in Surefoot on the world that all use the exact same process. Surefoot, better fitting, better skiing. I pray there's no reincarnation. Nothing could equal the journey I've had. Everything else would be a boring encore. I was always exploring. Everyone said Taos was unskiable. It was certainly magnificent, but it would be the future site of a grand ski resort. They thought I was mad. They were right. In the tradition of Montana's pioneering spirit, and born of the same individualism, enthusiasm, and ingenuity that marks the American West, come the most innovative skis in skiing. Peak skis. by Bodie Miller in Bozeman, Montana, with new thinking, unbridled passion, and new technology that promises to forever change the ski industry.
Have a look. Would you have a look up on the screen if you're sitting on the bleachers? It's a little screen, but it's bigger than uh, your phone screen, right? If you're watching on Facebook Live, hello. Greetings, salutations, aloha. Welcome in, bienvenue. And all that other good stuff. Here's Sam Mays, last year's, excuse me, yesterday's champ. He walked out with $20,000. And we didn't find him in the bar. There was no 10% rule last night. He stayed <laughs> focused. The Belgian competitor, I don't think that's the right flag that's on there. Um, but anyway, that's uh, Belgium Sam Mays. Nice guy. Just We had a quick conversation with him yesterday. Very uh, very polite, very forthright. Let's just ski in, do the talking, Kev. So, seeing with the Mazda Bibon, our giant slalom sponsor for the World Pro Ski Tour World Championships is Mazda. So, all those big Mazda logos. and the, Needs to pull that bib down so he can read the Mazda. Yeah, yeah, yeah. just a little bit more. Uh, so, he's going to take that solo run, as you mentioned, Uncle Lee, just to get a feel of the two courses. And then, who will he meet? That next pair will determine that. It's... Adrian Meissen with the advantage over George Steffi will be the pair that will face off for their second Sam. run and see who's going to advance into the round of 16. Yeah, Luke ready. Once we complete this run, look at the smile on Sam up there. Hi, $20, Sam. $1,000 yesterday. I'd be smiling too. Hip. So out on track he goes. He's going to settle in. Let's get a feel for the course as we move some of that soft snow. Every run these guys take, we get down to that harder snow. So if you see him make a move as he goes over that jump, it's called pre-jumping it. So trying to get the ski back down the snow as quick as possible. Around the turn he goes. Into the left foot. Ooh, gets a little bit inside there. It's hard to just ski easy. Yeah. When you're no one on the racetrack. <laughs> super aggressive, razor sharp skis. You got to keep moving the energy down the hill. So he's your first pro to advance into the round of 16. Yesterday's champion. What's he have for the field today in GS? Nice job, Sam. You'll go up against the winner of this duel coming up. Adrian Messin from Germany out of Garmisch, Germany, the 26-year-old, using hair as his strength. He's on the red course. George Steffi, U.S. team member out of Stratton Mountain School into Dartmouth, New Hampshire is his roots, and he is on the blue course. The advantage, 0.166, goes to Adrian Messin. Barely even going to notice it as the gates drop. So let's see what George has got for him here. Try to stay focused. Try to force him into a mistake. Going to have to chase him down with the doors open. One, six, six. Yes. So Adrian waiting along with George Steffi. I'm never wrong about that. Giant German. George is no, no small guy either. No. I met him the first time at the Martini Tree with their opening yeah. meeting. Did you know that George is a 2015 Stratton Mountain School Chili Cookoff champ? And now you do. From New Hampshire. <laughs> from New Hampshire. Look at him. Good, strong start. Steffi gets it right back from missing at the top. Mason loses his outside ski here. Here comes the U.S. ski team member. Good pressure all the way through the end of the turn. The German leaning in, tipping in. Steffi out in front now. Can he hold on to it? And course side working his way into the left footer. Through the alley it goes. The American has the advantage. It was German with the advantage after the first run. Looks like it's all Steffi here at the bottom here. Hammered away in the blue course side. Good exchange over the jump. It's going to be the American at the line first. On he goes. To face yesterday's champion Sam Mays, the U.S. ski team member George Steffi with the win. Steffi laying down the law of the land on home turf here at USA. Nice job, George Steffi. You're going to go up against winner from yesterday, Mays, in the next round. That's our first duel for the round of 16. Let's shift it back up to the top. Philippe Forcheck, he will go up against Ivor Ness from Norway. Ivor had uh, an advantage due to uh, Forcheck. Pole getting stuck, I believe that yeah, was. Whole run with one pole. Whole run with one pole. So we're gonna we're gonna swap them around this time. Ness will take the red course. Fjordcheck, one of the faster dudes on tour, will take the red. He was so quick in qualifying, eclipsed the field by over a second in qualifying. He hasn't been able to convert that. So Fjordcheck on the blue, excuse me, and Ness on the red. They're swapping it around. So Fjordcheck. Ninth in the overall, the differential on this one is 0.289, going to the Norwegian on that red side. So waiting for Randy. Patson, our starter, Matt Rogers, looks on, the yellow coats closing the doors. You know, Forchek's father was a professional tennis player. 
So good with uh, the forehand ready. and the backhand. Lukas ready. Check, his brother quite good as well. It's going to be a slight differential. Gate opening for Ivor first on the red hand side. Off and running. Here we go. So four check. Not giving up any ground at the start. Right time the perfectly coming out. So looks like he's turned it around. Fastest qualifier. Forcheck touches down, multi-time national champion. Forcheck with the advantage on the blue, striding away, hammers away in the panel. Makes a good, strong left footer around the turn. He has the advantage as we come to the bottom jump. It's all about Forcheck on this run. Getting it done, Forcheck turns around. The advantage that Ness had it is going to advance into the round of 16. Forcheck advancing on, and he will go up against either Tange Neff or Christian Sovek. So, a lot of heavy hitters in this one early on. Could be paired up in the round of 16. Nice job, Philip Forcheck. You guys are getting a feel for how this works. You're loaded up top. Let's swap blue it around ready. this time. Tangi Neff on the blue course. He represents Switzerland. And Christian Sovek representing Norway. Differential 0.7 advantage Sovek. So Sovek jumps out of the doors with that 7 tenths built in when they open. So Sovek, your overall tour leader. Out in front of Ankeny, Ankeny trying everything he can. Got to hope for a mistake out of Sovex. Here they come. Oh, excuse me. I'm now talking about the overall with Ankeny is what I'm referring to, gentlemen, as they make the turn here into the bottom jump. Oh, this is going to be close. Going to be a super close one. Can he close the gap at the line? Across the line we go. Photo finish. It's going to be Sovex winning the run by .159. 159 on will go Sovex into the round of 16. That's not yeah. what Ankeny he wanted to see for the overall tour standings as we come into the final race of the weekend. I want to give these guys kudos for chasing it all season long. And look at this finish. Look at this finish. Hand out in front. And that was Sovek, also Norway, making it happen. Couple of couple of first places, couple of second places, and a whole lot of money. Sovek over 30000 bucks. Let's go on now with Michael Ankeny and Arnaud Bosset. Ankeny is on the blue course, oh, Bosset oh, on the red. So Bosset had the advantage, but Ankeny left him standing there. Down the pitch to go. Ankeny trying to make up that 2-7-1 that was Bosset's advantage after the first run. Ankeny gets a good, strong power out of the sleeve. He touches down with the advantage. Bosset trying to close the gap, but he went a little bit wide off that jump. Ankeny coming around the bend with the advantage. Drops into his bullet. Got to continue to try to generate speed down to that tuck. Ankeny's long, clean turn on the right footer. Over the bottom jump, it's Ankeny out in front. Looks like he's got enough now to hold on to it. Move on. Ankeny at the line first. On he will go. Mike Lankety with the advantage of a 3 1 0. Turns it around over Bosset's advantage on that first run with 2 7 1. Well, it gives the athletes some idea of what the parity is of the two courses. Well, because yeah. when you're losing on your first run. Winner, winner. Okay, yeah, Ankeny the Joker, the pride of Buck Hill, moving on to the next round, and he'll go up against either Centarelli or Anger, and Blue that's our ready. next loaded Blue duel ready. from France is Enzo Centarelli, the 24-year-old, enjoying life and all things skiing, and Benny Anger out of Watton's hey. Austria. On course, Anger on the red, Centarelli on the blue. So, Anger with that 7 tenths of advantage, times it perfectly, holds on to that 7 tenths. Down the pitch she goes, staying in the center of the ski, moving the center mass down the hill, staying ahead of the, ahead of the feet. Here he goes around the turn. Red course with the advantage. And it was it was Anger with that 7 tenths at the top. It closed in that. Here we go into the finish. Oh, it looks like it's going to be close. Of course, closing in here. It gets greater on the red side. Woo! So, Ooh. Anger with the win there. And it's by 2-5-4 for Anger. 2-5-4. Nice job. Anger, you're going to face Ankeny. <laughs> Anger taking down Centerelli. So great camaraderie. That's right. Keeping the, the foo and fun. I like what I see. Here's another look coming in towards the finish line. And in a game of inches, you get that body part across first to break the beam because the skis sometimes are too low to break the beam. So that hand reaching across helps out. Great race and great camaraderie. That's what this World Pro Ski Tour is all about. Thanks to CB Sports. Thanks to Celsius. Thank you, Mazda, for all the tremendous support and love for our third stop of three.
here at the World Pro Ski Tour. Let's set the stage now. We're going to go to Spain, España. This kid came on strong at the last event in Bear Valley, Bear Valley, Central California. Alex Puente Tesías, the 29-year-old from Vila, España, going against the Great Brit Ripper, Lori Taylor. And the advantage goes to Lori Taylor with point two three zero. So you'll see the red gate open just a little bit ahead of Alex. So waiting for Randy to start the cadence. Racers focusing on the job at hand. Ready. Tails up against the kickboard. You see them push down on the poles. Tips rise up. Try to time it just perfectly to come up to the doors when the light goes green. Let's see what happens out on track. They will go. Pretty even start by both these guys. Lori had the advantage on the blue course after the first run. So the cease. Now on the blue course side, can you stride away from the Mexicans and make their way into the top jump? Out front, the Spaniard looking clean and smooth and aerodynamic, making the turn. So the blue course, as we know, a little bit quicker here as he hit the bottom of the track. Oh, he's got enough advantage at this point. German or Brit, trying to straighten it out. The line's going to be the Spaniard crossing the line, finish. And on he will go into the round of 16. Nice job by the Spaniard holding on strong and fending off Laurie Taylor. Great to have the Great Britain contingency here. They've had a great job, a great time in the World Cup this year. Had a chance to ski with Charlie Raposa before the World Cup in Palisades. And boy, what a bunch of nice, nice individuals. Love skiing, love racing. Jake Jacobs will be on the blue course now. Alexander Schmid, the red German, on the red course. Blue course Advantage ready. Point seven by Schmid. Watch this kid on the red. His technique, his style, and his pace. So Jake timing it perfectly, but he had that seven tenths advantage. Jake come down the pitch, chasing him down. See what he has for Schmidt, the German, who was so strong yesterday. Fourth in the overall standing yesterday, taking away three grand. Jake Jacobs doing a good job to keep it as close as he possibly can. See if he can take advantage of that faster blue course. Here comes Jacobs coming alongside. Still trails though. The German at the jump is going to touch down with the advantage. Jake doing everything he can to keep it close. And on goes the German. From Glen Falls, New York, Jake Jacobs, a pleasure to have you and your family out in the mix. The German Alexander Schmid, too much right there for Jake. Uh, I'll tell you, Schmid, 2021 bronze medal at the World Championships and earned a silver medal at the Olympics and the team event. So Schmid, no stranger to success. As mentioned before, he took fourth place yesterday, earned himself 3000 U.S. dollars. So speaking of the Jacobs family, Susan is down in the World Pro Ski Tour merchandise tent. So stop down and see Susan. That smile on her face always. And she's got some really cool World Pro Ski Tour swag. So pick yourself up a t-shirt, a hat, lots of cool stuff right alongside the Jaeger tent, right alongside the DNA Vibe. Our friends from DNA Vibe out there, check it out. Red course ready. So here we go, back to the top of the next pair. Red course ready. and Spear, Spinniger with the advantage. 0 0.70 stands behind the doors on the blue course side. Out on track he goes. Oh, big Ew. advantage. So not only was it seven tenths, yeah. but uh, a great start. Spear got left hand in there. But, so you're going to watch Spinniger just try to coast it, try to save some energy. But you still got to stay on line. You don't want to get out in the soft snow. Track developing nicely. It's going to get baked here is the sun, the beautiful sun here in springtime at Talski Valley. Really softens up that alleyway section is it faces right at the sun. So, Reto Schmittinger, number three in the overall standings, moves on to the round of 16. Nice job, Reto. You had nice success at the beginning of the season last year and here as well. Good luck. And for Squishy, Simon Spear, Booth Bay Bubblegum Blowing Contest Champion in the second grade. What a pleasure to have him here. He had a birthday a couple days ago. Happy 23rd there, Simon Spear. We move on. It's going to be Patrick Kenny and Kiefer Christensen, a couple of dudes from the USA. Kiefer hails from Alaska. He's known as the, the kid from AK with a red beard and the red hair. He's on the blue course. Patrick Kenny at your home ready. turf out of Tash, New Hampshire. Ready. Yeah, all right. Kenny carrying that seven tons of advantage really needs to be on the doors. As soon as they make the move, out of course he goes. Kenny timed it perfectly, dropping down the pitch. US ski team number, second year here. Had a blast, and he brought a lot of his friends back. George oh, and Kiefer. Oh, Kiefer got break. So, on goes Patrick Kenny. So, Kenny into the alleyway he goes, not knowing that Christensen is off course behind him. 
Never know what's going to happen, right, Kev? You, yeah. just, you stick to your game. So Patrick going to cross that line. On he goes to face Redos Mettinger. He'll have his hands full. That'll be a good battle. Well, Patrick Kenny, a product of the Burke Mountain Academy, the legendary Burke Mountain Academy. That's where you go to learn how to set the edge. There's some great camaraderie. Up top, you take a peek at Kiefer. He gets wide. Here, just, oh, he just gets a skis that get clack together, and that uh, hands in the air is not a, a sign of success. That's a sign of frustration. So, Kenny, you're advancing on. You'll feature yourself against Schmidiger in the next round. All ladies, please Rick report to the top. All ladies, Rick please Rick report to the top. It's going to be your turn next. Now we're going River Radimus and Jeremy Lagier. River has the advantage on the blue course. The gate drops, and Jeremy's going to be chasing. Oh, that track they go. Radimus hammered away with that strong first run. Seven tenths of advantage for other U.S. key team member. Now he's sponsored by Tyus. He loves it here. This is where he spends his off-season time. Radimus out Bring for that up. seven tenths advantage. Looks pretty Solid right now over Lagier, so it's going to be River Radimus. Go River. for Taos. Go River. Ski team. Moving on. Who's he going to face will be determined by the next pair. It's going to be Smith and Frost next. That's it. One of the highlights of my season was watching River take the third place run at Palisades Tahoe. We were up in the VIP area, and people were jumping and bouncing up and down. The VIP bar, all the alcohol, all the bottles falling off. <laughs> it was not a safe place to be up there. Oh, it was crazy. River, it was a great moment in time and a of great racing ready. today. Yep. Going back you to the top, ready. it's time for the German Roman Frost. He's on the red course this time. Andrea Smith skiing for University of Nevada Reno from Norway. He's uh, on the, the track blue. They go. Frost gets the advantage after the first run by seven tenths of a second. It looks like he got all of it up there as we watch Smith come down the pit to see if he can take advantage of that blue course side. German running wide off the top jump down to the tuck they go make the turn this is going to be tight here he comes looks like smith the rookie from norway putting the pressure on smith starting to turn it around on the blue course side over the bottom jump german still with the advantage as he gets his keys back to the snow soon looks like he's going to hold on to that advantage it's going to be frost crossing the line first wins the run by point three two four for frost Smith, rocking dual citizenship. Dad from the Taos area, mom, I believe, from Norway. A business major at UNR. Great skiing, big career ahead of him. And for Roman Frost, from Bayer Leverkusen, going to school at Westminster, part of the German national team, and he's showing you his skills. Nice job, rocking Roman. So, Simone Rightfuss, Camelader, and Jan Zabastrand coming at you next. Camelader will be carrying that advantage, Uncle Lee. Yeah. So Kammerlander, not afraid to throw it down. He did not have a very successful Aspen event, nor Bear Valley. So he is hungry like the wolf. Competed in the 2018 Olympics, represented Bolivia, uh, although he's got Austrian citizenship as well. His favorite skier, guess who it is, Kevin? His mom. His mom. <laughs> That's right. That. His mama. If you're just joining us or just waking up around the world and tuning in, we're on the second run of the round of 32. That gate there is going to need to be repaired before we get going with Simon and Jan Zabastran from Czechia. And this is our third day of three here at Taos Ski Valley in the third year we've been here. I want to thank Franz Weber. That's right, Franz Weber. He's all in orange out there. He's one of the key pieces of the puzzle that got this tour stop here by working with Taos Ski Valley owners and representatives and we're grateful for Franz for what he does for the ski greater ski community he's brought in uh, this particular trip Tamara McKinney the 82 83 World Cup overall champion Pika Bruce Street the Olympic gold medalist the likes of Ted Ligeti the Mayer brothers are hit here no Deb Armstrong this year Deb's over in Japan as I was told and uh, the likes of so many other great legendary racers in the mix and for you folks watching online that's the top of Kachina Peak the wind has been howling for the last three or four days and only going to continue picking up as the weekend progresses. And look at this. We got some racers in the gate. Zabistran. So oh. what we want to do is any athletes, if you've been eliminated or not, we are going to move a panel in up there. So we need the athletes to get up there and give it a side slip. So when the ladies start, we... Red course ready. Okay, here's the track. 0.7 advantage, 0.342, excuse me, to Kammerlander. The red gate is going to open up just a little earlier, and it does just that. Good nice job start. for Kammerlander. Really needs it. We know that blue course is fast. Kammerlander drops down the pitch, trying to keep it close. Kammerlander there, get a good high line, set the edge, but here comes 
Zabastron on that blue side. Looking tough for Camline as they make the turn. That blue court accelerates away. Can he hold on to it at the turn? Camline to the red. Straightening it out now best he can. Over the bottom jump. It's going to be Zabastran with the advantage over Camelander. That's going to end it for Camelander today. On goes John Zabastran. Well, Camelander, a valiant effort there. Beat out by Zabastran. Big shout out, big props goes to SBK. In St. Moritz World Championships in 2017, he competed in all disciplines. So an incredibly well-rounded skier. Simone, Brightfoot's Camelander, always a pleasure to have your smile and your energy here. We shift it now to the Battle of the Great Britain versus Switzerland. It's going to be Billy Major. Billy's going to hit the blue course this time, where Loic Schabel from Switzerland has a .7 advantage. Again, the red gate from Loic is going to open up a little earlier. Blue course ready. You can hear our starter kicking him off. Here we go in three, two, one, off goes Loic. So seven tenths of advantage built into the doors is Loic. Bell drops down the pitch, looking clean and smooth. He knows that blue course is fast, 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 because that's where he picks up the seven tenths of advantage. So out in front, the pros in Switzerland holding on as they make the turn. Here comes the blue course. Billy Major, seeing if he can make a move. It's Major on that blue course, quicker side, still trails as they drop down off the bottom bump. Can he straighten it out? It's going to be on the red course. The wind going to look. Look, Shabo, his career highlight. His future win at the World Pro Ski Tour. I like to highlight that one each time because if you if you can can if, see if you can conceive it, you can achieve it. So Loic from the round of 32 on to 16. Two more battles left from the round of 32 to chop it into 16. Now we're going to set a stage with Eric Reed, father Ken Reed. Legend of the Crazy Canucks from back in the 80s and 90s. He's going to go up against Luis Fausa from Oslo, Norway. The 23-year-old skis out of CU. He won a fist race this year at Vail. Fausa has a point five four nine advantage. Blue course ready. So Fausa on the red side. Doors going to open with five four nine. As Uncle Lee just mentioned, back of the tails of the skis they go. Out of track it comes. So Reed doing a good job of not letting that big advantage get away from him. So he's going to try to close the gap on the blue course side. Gates are getting hammered away today. Saw snow underneath the track. And it's all about the red course still. But here comes the Eric Reed, the Canadian now. He pulls out ahead of the blue course side. We know it straightens out a little bit of the, at the bottom here in the red. But Reed out front now, striding away. Off the bottom jump goes Reed with the advantage. And he looks like he's going to win it from here. On goes Eric Reed. Oh, Canada. <laughs> Reed had himself a victory last year. He loved the way that $20,000 U.S. money translated into the loonies and the yeah, toonies, huh? I like that. <laughs> it's a lot of motion up there. Okay, Reed, you're going on to the round of 16. So, wait. And now we got another duel. It's going to be Sawyer Matson out of Bridgewater, Vermont. He got the call late this morning to jump in as an alternate. As uh, Luke Winter, I think, bowed out, as well as another competitor, but he'll go against yesterday's runner-up from the Tyrol region in Austria, Raphael Hasser. And you see Raphael floating in to the blue course right now. Big old Celsius live fit banner. I had my Celsius this morning, Uncle Lee, when I headed down to the fitness center at the Blake. Did you? Oh, yeah. Did you? Motivated me to grind it out this morning. So stop down to see your friends from Celsius putting cans in hand. <laughs> that's it, cans in hands and heads in beds, baby. That's what the, that's what the tourism uh, departments like to see. All athletes back up top. All athletes back up top. Sawyer on the blue. Raphael Hauser. Uh, again, all men back up to the top. So Raphael, third overall in the World Cup standings this season in Super G, albeit there was only two races uh, in Super G this year due to an incredible amount of cancellations, the most that the Fist has seen in the history, in the 100-year history. So, here we go. Ready to go, coming out on track. So it was Hauser second yesterday. Sawyer Matson was an alternate, so He's just glad to be out here racing against one of the greatest skiers 
the World Cup, and now on the World Pro Ski Tour. Hauser, the Austrian, clean and smooth, so centered on his skis, getting all the energy out of it. He knows he doesn't have to hammer away too hard in this run with the disparity in the qualifying procedures. He, your second quickest in that ladder. So it's the Austrian and across the line. So, how is it? And according to, uh, according to the uh, sports book, uh, money is on Hauser today to take the victory here. We'll see what happens there. He either is going to win it or he's not. One of those two is going to happen. And we'll be back in just a minute with a ladies round of 16. We're going to slip the course, reset the gates, and do high fives with Ed Rogers, and we'll be right back. A car like this shouldn't exist. Something this big, this luxurious, shouldn't move like a Mazda. And yet, it does. <laughs> oh my God, it sounds epic as well. This car is an SUV with bragging rights. The Free Row Mazda CX-90. Reminder, men, we need all men to go back to the top and put a slip on the course, whether you're eliminated or not. Get on the track. Let's get up there. Let's move some of the soft snow out before we start the ladies. Ladies will be patiently waiting. We're going to make a modification on the red course side to even it up now that we've, we've completed the first round. Everybody gets a run on each course, so with the dual elimination format, it makes it even. So all athletes... While the women wait to start their first run of the round to 16, all athletes, please head up there. Give it a side slip. So give that, give the ladies a nice first run track. It's going to be a long day with the sun beating down out there. So please, athletes, to the top to slip for the ladies. In the tradition of Montana's pioneering spirit, and born of the same individualism, enthusiasm, and ingenuity that marks the American West, come the most innovative skis in skiing. Peak skis. by Bodie Miller in Bozeman, Montana, with new thinking, unbridled passion, and new technology that promises to forever change the ski industry. I pray there's no reincarnation. Nothing could equal the journey I've had. Everything else would be a boring encore. I was always exploring. Everyone said Taos was unskiable. It was certainly magnificent, but it would be a future site of a grand ski resort. They thought I was mad. They were right. CB Sports is a vintage ski brand that was very popular in the 80s and 90s, created by CB Vaughn, and we are fortunate enough to be able to relaunch that brand into the market in 2022. CB Sports is basically a retro vintage brand from the past being brought into the present. It's got great designs, lines, and features. It's a great old outerwear brand that's made new. The best nights start with Jägermeister. Made with 56 botanicals. Always served ice cold. It will take a miracle to come back from this. Heartbreaking end of the season. But what's this? For the moments when anticipation. Fox counting down. Five seconds. Three, two, one. Becomes celebration. 
celebration. Jägermeister. Meister the moment. moment. For more than half a century, Seiko has been supporting athletes in their efforts to be the best. Now, we want to bring this reliable technology to anyone striving for a goal. Because we understand, a split second can change everything. Keep going forward, prospects. This just in, your beautiful people, and it's Saturday, Taos Pro Ski Tour Championship. Uh, for you folks that are watching at home, or if you're here and you can see the, the bracket, that's what the top 16 look like. No real surprises, Kevin. It's, you know, the course is, you know, there might have been a little discrepancy, but everyone got an equal shake at it. Your thoughts on the first round? No, I'd have to agree, Uncle Lee. You know, it's uh, as... You would expect with a lot of new guys in the field, but kind of according to uh, well, Forcheck, good to see him in there, and Michael Ankeny and and our tour leader are still in the in the hunt, so that's always good to see. You know what I see is interesting is that second pair, Forcheck and Sovek. You know, two guys that have had great success in this tour, but one of them is going to get knocked out in this next round. So now let's let's just let's just look at it this way, if. Selvek advances and Ankeny advance, which is speculating here. They could meet, meet each other in a later round, and the battle for the overall tour championship is on between Ankeny and Sovek. Ankeny coming into this race weekend, trailing Sovek. So, lots of rounds to go. Women going to come up next as we're going to put a modification to the course to even them up a little bit. Just a panel move or two on the red side by one panel length, and then the men will give it a little bit of a slip, and will run the women down the course for their first round of the round of 62. And uh, while you're at it, folks, if you're just walking around aimlessly with, uh, like, just no clue as to what to do, and you got 10 bucks in your pocket, uh, cruise to the Kachina Sports. It's right where all the tents are set up right now, all the sponsor tents, just that's in the building, right in the downstairs. Uh, find it. Uh, because $10 gets you a cowbell. That's cool to begin with. It also gets you a raffle ticket. The drawing starts at noon. It's for Working on Wellness. That's a nonprofit charity benefiting children in the greater New Mexico area. And that's always a good thing. Some are not as fortunate as others. And this Working on Wellness does work. $26,000 in prizes are all yours for a simple $10 donation. The raffle ticket's available with the, for $10. And you get a cowbell also, which is always nice. I got mine right here. Listen. Can never have enough cowbells. Uh, Jeff Sherwood, we want to thank you for your uh, your dedication and direction on this raffle. Again, working on wellness, ten dollars gets you a cowbell, and you need not be present to win. So make sure you get over there, drop your ten bucks. You never know what you could win. Some people are lucky when it comes to raffles. All right, we're taking a small break. We're coming back with the ladies leading things off as Paula Moulton, yesterday's winner and a dynamic member of the U.S. ski team. We'll be back.
looks like it's getting ready to go. The first run of winners there is Don Morgan. The tournament director has come down the track and okay, moved a couple of gates in the panel to try to bring the disparity between the two courses closer. So barely a panel width can make the difference between these two courses. So first up, Paula Moulton at Tiga Wold, Uncle Lee. Sometimes that's all it takes is a slight adjustment, Kevin, right? So. Tegan Wool, the rookie this season out of Vail. She is going up against a formidable foe, foe I should say, Paula Moulton. She won the first race here last year. She did, she did a mirror image, a carbon copy Groundhog's Day yesterday. So she has $20,000 in her pocket. I see twenty thousand in, in one hundred. Where did the one hundred come well, from? She won the one hundred dollars for winning the, uh, the, the speed, speed run. run. So oh yeah, speed run picks you up hundred bucks along with valuable points. Five points going to Moltsin. That can so help. That can be a tiebreaker. Does anybody have anything? Moltsin second and third were the Norby sisters Tuva and Kaya, and then Trish Mangin round out the top four in the overall standings for the World Championships. So. Okay. okay. Tegan Wold, right. Vail, Colorado on the red course. Paula Moulton, 4th of July blue baby. Ready. U.S. team member. Great season she's had. She's on the blue course. Looking as she she can't go back to back. Even start. Here we go. Out on track they go with that even start in the first of two runs in the round of 16 for the ladies. Then the men will start their portion. Moulton on the red side getting the feel for the first run down the track. Knows the difference between these two and their qualifying positioning so she's gonna ski it clean smooth start get the feel for it smoltz and looking great coming through the turn and around the left footer right foot excuse me coming into the bottom jump it's bolts and out in front gonna cross the line first so bolts and takes the max differential their first to two runs nice job paula she took a world championship gold medal in the team event at the world championships last season and those were uh, swapped around, by the way. Paula was on the red course for the graphic, and Tegan was on the blue. So they'll swap this next round, and we will focus our sights on Sarah Rask and Fabian Durago, Durigo from Germany. So Rask, jumping out first on a blue course side, down to pitch he goes, loses her outside ski, tipped in a little bit, still holding on to the advantage on that blue side is Rask. Oh, wide for Rask, getting out in the soft snow there off that top jump. Evens it up now that she knows when she makes the turn on that left footer. Let's see how the course is run here. Into the right footer. For Rask, here they go. Gap closing up right now. Looks like the red course charging hard across the line. Going to take the win. Fabiano so, Dorigo, the German, by how much? 418, I believe. 418. 418 goes to the red course. Dorigo, that's point four one eight. Sarah Rask, that Swede competitor, she walked away with a victory in Aspen. She took a first and a third. Not so much success at Bear Valley. Okay, let's continue on. We're looking at Aaron Milzinski, current tour leader up against Caitlin Harsh. These two are friends. They're also on the sportsinsurance.com team. And after these two races, one of them will advance to the round of eight. Caitlin Harsh, 71 points in the overall tour standings. Above hers, Tua Norbe and Aaron Mulzinski, the top three in the overall tour standings, copy, as copy. opposed to the World Cup standings. We're crowning a tour champion here ready. today, along Luke with the world ready. champion. There you go. Yeah, no. So Milzinski's on the red, yeah. Harsh is on the blue. Harsh gets a little bit of a jump on Milzinski as they drop down to pitch. Harsh with a nice quick clean start, has about a speed length advantage as they drop down to pitch. Here they come into the first jump. Harsh touches down, Milzinski's made up the ground on the red course side. Trying to find the groove, their first of two runs in the round of 16. Around the corner they go. This is where Harsh, or Harsh will pick it up over Mozinski, but here comes Mozinski on that right footer, starting to turn it back. It's going to be a close one. Looks like Mozinski has the edge as they cross the finish line. The Canadian will get there first. She wins the first of their two runs by point three three two for Mozinski. Three three two for Mozinski. Current Heat uh, Tour leader didn't have great success yesterday for the first time that we've seen since she has been introduced to this tour. So. Good luck to Milzinski as she continues her march towards another tour crown. 
And Caitlin Harsh, ready. you have a disadvantage Two of point three three two. Now it's Elena Exenberger on the red course. Trisha Mangan, US team member, fourth place yesterday on course. So out of track they go. Mangan looks like she gets the stronger the two starts over the Austrian. Exenberger down the pitch she go. Mangan with the advantage. So it's like Mangan, a good strong. Whoa, super wide. Lands out in the soft stuff on that blue course side. So their first run down the hill to figure out the takeoff points and touchdown points off the jumps. Looking strong is Mangan. The U.S. ski team makes the corner into the bottom jump. She goes in control. This the first run for these two over X and Burgers. It's going to be Mangan with the win by point eight. Nine. So max differential going to Mangan. Point seven zero. Point seven zero. Mangan, two-time Olympian, was on the skis at the age of two with her twin brother William. Big inspiration by David and Martha, her parents, and Elena Exenberger out of CU on the Austrian national team, the 23-year-old. Nice skiing, ladies. Blue course Let's ready. go up top. Kaya Norby, University of Utah, European Cup overall winner in GS. She's going up against the German. Out of Innsbruck, Austria, Leonie Flotkin, and they're on course. Kai on the red, Flotkin on the blue. Kai with a slight edge. Oh, Flotkin, with more experience. Took a year off from racing on the pro tour, but she is back. First run around the 16 for the ladies. Looks like Kaya in control of this run. We know what happens on the blue course side. We've adjusted the course, so they're running closer as we watch them work through the alleyway. And later on, we're going to put some salt down that alley to harden things up as the sun beats down. All about Norby here in their first to two runs. She's going to win it by the maximum differential. Kaya liked the way that podium in third place felt yesterday. Earned some nice cold hard cash. She's gonna head back up top and do it again against Leone. And we invite every athlete to head back up top. All ladies back up top. We're gonna go right back into the action. Red course and speaking ready. of action, we're gonna go with Denise Ding's letter from Austria. Blue She's ready. on the red course going up against the Swede competitor, Evelina Fredrickson. And the lights go from yellow to green. Doors open simultaneously on the first run. We're on the second run. We factor in the differential as he is gonna have the advantage here. Looks like a good close one for Fredrickson. The Ding's letter down the pitch they go. Maybe a little bit of advantage on the blue course side when he back down to the ground wide on the red side now giving up a little advantage to the blue as Fredrickson starts to pull it away the blue course straightens out but we've given a little bit of an edge back to the red down here starts to straighten out right here on the red it looks like on the blue course this is going to be a close one have to go to the line who's it going to be with the advantage looks like the red course get it first Cross the line, point zero seven eight, Uncle Lee for Ding Sledder. Ding Sledder, zero seven eight. That is light and tight. So that's going to be a close one for Evelina and Denise as they go back up top, swap courses. Again, ladies, jump on that lift ASAP. Hold off on your autograph signing till later. We got lots more racing to do. Point zero seven eight, Ding's letter getting the lead on that one over Evelina. Let's hit back up to the top. It's going to be Italy versus Germany. Nora Grand. She'll be on the red course. Carlotta Marcora, newcomer to the game from Italy on the red. Two rookies coming at you right now. Lights go green. Who has the edge coming down the pitch? Looks like a good even start with Brand on the red course side. The German drops down the pitch. Still even as could be as they head for the jump. It's a bit of a soft rut to belt up there. You got to get your keys in that rut. Try to get some energy out of it. This is anybody's race. It's Brand on the red. You're going to see Makora start to pull away in the blue side, but we know he turns back on the red side as he gets down into the turn. Across the jump they go. Here we go. Even it up. Touch it down. About simultaneous. It's going to be another photo finish here. Who's going to have the end? Looks like Brand crosses the line first. He does another point zero four. Wow, four one hundredths of a sec second. Nor Brand out of Munich, Germany, skied uh, for DU. Skis for DU, ripping fast on those Rossies. Carlotta Marcora from Italy, the twenty-four-year-old, took first at the World University Games in slalom last year. As we have a peek back at the finish, it's that first body part, first anything to cross the beam, and the skis a lot of times go underneath the beam, so the hand reaching works out well. We want to send the men up for the sec Red for the first ready. round of the round of 16. But right now, let's go on with Hitter and Norby, our final duo of this round. What do you see, Kev? So I see the adjustments that Barrett Stein made are working as they drop down. Looks like Blue Course getting a bit of a jump. Tour champion for two years ago, two of a Norby with some new skis underfoot. They seem to be working super well for her. Here are the first of two runs in the round of 16. This is the last pair as Norby makes the turn on the left footer. She knows those adjustments are going to come into play. Working it for Ed that she can. So Norby, your second 
The person in the ladder knows has a greater disparity here in earlier rounds, so it's going to be Norby with the maximum differential. 0 for Norby. Norby had a chance to run the course with the GoPro for our course preview this morning. Nice work, and she will have a .7 advantage over at least hit her. Ladies, go back up top as we are going to have you do what you need to do. All men, head back up top for your first run of round number one as well. We're going to go to a break. Come right back. We only have two athletes. car like this shouldn't exist. Something this big, this luxurious, shouldn't move like a Mazda. And yet, it does. <laughs> oh my God, it sounds epic as well. This car is an SUV with bragging rights. The three row Mazda CX-90. nights start with Jägermeister. Made with 56 botanicals. Always served ice cold. Take a miracle to come back from this. Heartbreaking end of the season. But what's this? For the moments when anticipation... Fox counting down. Five seconds. Three, two, one. Becomes celebration. Jägermeister. Meister the moment. For more than half a century, Seiko has been supporting athletes in their efforts to be the best. Now, we want to bring this reliable technology to anyone striving for a goal. Because we understand, a split second can change everything. Keep going forward. Prospects. CB Sports is a vintage ski brand that was very popular in the 80s and 90s, created by CB Vaughn, and we are fortunate enough to be able to relaunch that brand into the market in 2022. CB Sports is basically a retro vintage brand from the past being brought into the present. It's got great designs, lines, and features. It's a great old outerwear brand that's made new. For the best deal on the best shed or garage, visit toughshed.com. I pray there's no reincarnation. Nothing could equal the journey I've had. Everything else would be a boring encore. I was always exploring. Everyone said Taos was unskiable. It was certainly magnificent, but it would be a future site of a grand ski resort. I thought I was mad. They were right. In the tradition of Montana's pioneering spirit, and born of the same individualism, enthusiasm, and ingenuity that marks the American West, come the most innovative skis in skiing. Peak skis. Created by Bodie Miller in Bozeman, Montana. 
with new thinking, unbridled passion, and new technology that promises to forever change the ski industry. In general, ski racing is a pretty tough sport. Racers ready? Using my DNA vibe has allowed me to train harder, longer, and recover faster. Less days off, more time on the snow, beating my competitors. Having another option to be doing what we love and to continue to race, it just keeps the sport open and keeps you in it. As the founders of Surefoot, Bob and Russ Shea are obsessed with creating the perfect ski boot for you because they know that a properly fitted custom ski boot will make you a better skier, whatever level you're at. At Surefoot, they've developed a process that guarantees the perfect fit for each customer, and of course, they are obsessed with the process. We have 300 experts in Surefoot on the world that all use the exact same process. Surefoot, better fitting, better skiing. George Steffi up first, Forchek and Sovek, Ankeny, Angerer, Tassis, Schmidt, Schmidiger, Kinney, Radimus, Frost, Zabastran, Shubbel, and Reed and Hauser, your 16 athletes. First run of the round of 16, yes. You, you know what we didn't have last year? We didn't have Spain, nor did we have Belgium. So we want to thank Alex Puente Tassis from Spain, Sam Mays from Belgium for showing up and increasing the countries of this World Pro Ski Tour. So three Americans in that round of 16, Radimus, Steffi, and Kenny. So. And Kenny, yep. And not to mention... Um, that's a cool shot, Ankeny. Uncle Lee, the Ankeny drone as well. of the whole course, huh? Yeah, that's Corey Tiblis and Axel, now not can, Axel Rose, but... really see how defined that turn is coming into we call the alleyway. Yeah, that, exactly, the alleyway. Big old dog leg, a uh, hard right. It looks like a big, uh, big boot, and then spits it right down towards the finish. There's a perfect overhead E, look at that. So Barrett making some adjustments in that alley, and here's what's gonna happen after we finish the second run of the women in the round of 16. We're gonna put salt down on that course Margar section. Margarita salt? Uh, make some ice cream. <laughs> so it hardens up the snow, so you put the salt down and it makes it kick, as we call it, all summer long up at Mount Hood in Oregon when you're skiing in a blazing sun. They go up there, spend hundreds of pounds of salt on the track, and it keeps it hard for a long time, so skis will really run through there, so a little salt will be applied at the completion of the women's round of 16. As we learned in Deer Valley this year for aerials for the World Cup, there is a right salt to put on it, and there's a wrong salt to put on it. Yes. And uh, unfortunately for the triple kickers at Deer Valley for the uh, aerial competition, they put the wrong salt on it, so we were well, not able to got, do triple hard. jumps. It Yeah, it got... It got I it never was, thought they'd put you know, a chemical on the and free freestyle the landing. Well, the way the sun hit the face, anyway, yeah. Just cooking it. it. Just, it just cooked it. It just, it did not work out. It was uh, very unsafe, so they stuck to doubles. Anyway, women, for the second uh, run, all women, please head up to the top. All athletes, back up to the start. Once we start this second run for the men, the round is 16, narrowing it to eight. The women will automatically come out of the gates right behind them. So all ladies up to the start. So we can keep the flow going, keep everybody entertained on the live stream show at worldproskeetour.com or cbsports.com so you can watch all the action. You, you can. Also, I just got a bunch of information. Life in Between the Gates. It's a syndicated show that the A-Wing visual crew is doing. That's syndicated. It starts April 19th. So if you folks are watching this at home, get your pens and papers, your notepads out. April 19th syndicated life in between the gates it's a great behind the scenes you get the interviews and it's a really a, a great presentation on television fox fs2 that's fox sf2 yesterday's super slalom will be on sunday 
April 7th. Yesterday's race on FS2, next Sunday, April 7th. And then this race will be two weeks from this Sunday, April 14th. So again, get your notepads out, write it down, throw it away. I mean, write it down and remember it, put it in your calendars. Again, April 7th, folks, yesterday's race. And uh, Giant Slalom Race, which is today, will be April 14th, all on Fox Sports 2. So, so much media being put forth. And right now, Kevin, we have two athletes that are loading the gates. One is from Belgium. Talk to us about how impressed you were yesterday with his racing. Sam Mays with a great attitude, smile on his face as he marched his way all the way to the top of the podium. George Steffi's got something to say about that from the U.S. ski team moves behind the start doors on the blue course. So, yeah, and Steffi, and Steffi ready to rip. Three top 30s for Steffi this year. That's just good confidence when you've got a pack of like 60 to 70 racers and you're looking for valuable World Cup points. The Stratton Mountain School in Dartmouth grad. Boom, open up the doors. Out on track they come. Simultaneous start. Looks like Steffi may have got a little jump over Mays. Down the pitch they go. Steffi on the blue course. Maybe with a little edge. Touch it down off the bottom jump. Wild. This goes Sam on the red side. Here comes George Steffi, USC team member. Three of them in the field today. Let's see what Steffi's got for Mays in the first of the two runs. They will switch courses and even it up. Looks like Steffi touched it down with the advantage. We know the red gets a little quicker right here into the line. It's going to be, looks like it's going to be Sam winning the run. 0 0.073. These courses are running super close now. Stein's adjustments are just what the course needed. Back to the top, they'll go and switch courses. So again, the advantage nice going to job. Point zero seven three. The blink of an eye to finish line. Barrett Stein, nice adjustment there. Trying to make it as fair as possible. Mays, you have the advantage. Blue ready. Now we go up top for Fjordcheck, who will be on the red course. Fjordcheck on the red course. Sovic on the blue course. Two very fast competitors starting Sovic out. Jumps out on track. He's our tour overall leader. Trying to hold on to that and tries to get the part of that world championship money. 20 grand up for grabs today. Looks like Forcheck got the advantage on the blue. These things are running super, super similar as they make their way into the alley. Coming off the bottom jump. Looks like it's going to be Forcheck trailing a little bit. We know the red gets a little bit quicker here. Touch it down. Forcheck now turns it around. It's going to be Forcheck at the line first. He's going to win it by point six four nine four check the fastest qualifier wins the run by point six four nine and that's going to play interesting that we'll talk about in the next race how this duel will possibly affect the overall with michael ankeny coming up next so we'll lead and tease with that as we set the stage for the next one ankeny the joker is going to go up against anger -er. watch ankeny because he's a monster coming out of the gates anger see if he can figure it out ankeny gets the jump not by much though on the red course side down the pitch they go number two in the overall standings michael ankeny winning a race early this year in aspen ankeny with the advantage now over angler on their first of two runs oh look at that cool drone shot following ankeny out Ankeny really getting the, some that juice out of his teeth through the alley. Anger is going to pull alongside with the drone following into the turn. Ankeny knows he's going to get a little bit of it back on the red side, back in the heels of his skis. Ankeny starting to pull away. It's going to be Ankeny, the American, across the line he goes. And he wins the run by .478 over the Austrian Michael Ankeny. .478, big wing for Ankeny. Well slayed, Ankeny, well slayed. Four tenths of a second advantage going into the next round. Great camera shot there, Corey. Axel, excellent drone ready. work. Yep. That's what we like Blue to see. Ready. Taking yep. a page from the Kitzbühel downhill this year. Alex Puente, CS. He's on the red course with Alex Schmid, Germany on Looks the blue. Like the Spaniard, maybe get a little bit of an edge. Let's see as they drop down the pitch. It's the Spaniard with a slight edge on the red course side. He runs a little bit low, wide out in the soft stuff. Anybody's race at this point. As we see the drone drop back into the picture. This is a dead even heat. Here we go. Chasing through the alley there with the blue. Gets the advantage only for a minute. Alex Schmidt. Looks like he has the edge over the Spaniard. He touches down by about a ski's length. Coming to the finish line. It's going to be the blue course with the win. Across he will go. And it's Schmidt with a 2-5-5 advantage. Point two five five for, for Schmidt, the rookie German. 
Schmid, some aggression. The 29-year-old customs officer from Germany just showing you what he's made of. Great success yesterday and applying that Luke today. One more race for those Luke two. Now we're going with Reto Schmidiger and Patrick Kenny. I know you're a big fan of this Kenny guy because he's coming from your home turf. Down on our track they go. Looks like Kenny maybe have a little bit of an edge on the blue side. He's figured it out. Down the pitch they go. Kenny out front, not by much though, as they make the turn and the drone chases him into the first jump. Kenny with the advantage on that blue track. Clean and smooth as he makes the turn. He knows he's going to get a big edge, but the red evens up at the bottom here. Kenny really stretching it out now through the alley into the right footer for Kenny, and he's got a big advantage here. Coming into the finish line, it's going to be Patrick Kenny with a win in a good big way across the line. Will go Patrick Kenny winning it by point six nine one, almost Matt. So, U.S. Ski Team member Patrick Kenny with a win over Reto Schmidinger. So strong skiing for Kenny. First run against Reto Schmidinger. So good I like it, Kenny. Kenny. I like it. Great racing there. Well put together. The New Hampshire native getting it done. River Radimus is on the red course. Roman Foss is on the blue course. Off and Foss. riding. It's that jump on Kenny or, or Radimus down the pitch. They go out in front in his towel sponsored suit. So, Foss. Out in front over Radimus as they make their way through the midsection of the course. Here comes Radimus starting to close the gap on him, settling into his course, but it's still Frost with the advantage. Radimus needs to focus in on the red. It makes the turn here and evens up. Let's see if Radimus can close the gap at the bottom. Here we come. Radimus on the red course side. Looks like he might get an edge. I don't know. We have to go to the clock. It's going to be Frost winning it. Narrow margin of a point zero seven five going to Frost. A blink of an eye at the finish line. Radimus settled in. Frost had advantage at the top, but he closed the gap. They'll go up and switch courses. So, 0 Feb 7 5 going to Frost. As you take a peek right there one more time. Gentlemen, if you have crossed the finish line, you're down there dilly dally and head back up top. We are ready to get things moving and grooving as we had a little later start. To the top we go, Jan Zabestrom from Czechia. He's on the red course going up against the Swiss competitor, Mr. Lord Trouble. The first of two races, we wait for the green, the red to turn to green. Zabestrom behind the red course doors, out on track they go. So good strong start by both these rookies. Down the pitch they go, Zabestrom. And Shovel. Zabas on the red course in the first of two runs of the round of 16 has a slight edge as they make the turn into the alley and the blue will pull alongside. Evened up really nicely with a course modification after the first run of the round of 32. Here we go. Looks like red course touching down first. Zabastron going to get to the line ahead of a good overhead shot from the drone. Across the line he goes. Zabastron winning it by 0 .378. 0 .378 for Zabastron. Zabastron studying wood processing at the Czech University in Prague. He's working on his masters there. So his skis got a little bit of wood in there, making sure he's able to arc them properly. Look, Shovel, you got your work cut out for you in the next round. So just like that, we're down to the final run, final round of this run of this round. Rafael Hazer last year, yesterday's second place runner up at a nice chunk of change. He's going up against Eric Reed in the red. So beautiful day up there, blue bird sky, a little bit of a breeze, not quite as whipping as it was yesterday no. up there. Hard job being a timer, top person in a, in a long day of wind blowing around up there, but this is what we deserve after a long yeah. season of cold it, weather and wind and snow. Look at the track, it's beautiful. So it's really cool to take a look and see the first skate marks on the track for both courses. It's like much more pronounced on the red side as they get some juice out of that ski and dive into that first turn with a good high line, getting that energy started. So super cool having a drone showing us exactly what the track looks like as we get ready for the final pair, Reed and Hauser. Yeah, Corey Tiblis hails from the Crested Butte area. Axel from uh, the mid mountain range near Breckenridge area. These two guys, they, they do a lot of off-road racing and they're getting really dang good with their drone shots. They're following cars for hours at a time, moving from location to location. They're able to keep the camera nice and stable. That's how you're getting that shot for you folks at home. And those that you can see on the screen here, that is just a fantastic shot. And we want to thank those guys for their skills. Here, Randy Red Patson up there, getting the Blue things going ready. here, starting to cadence for Reed and Hauser. Hauser, second place yesterday, taking away $6,300. What's Eric Reed for? Ah, for him. Uh, of course, they go. Reed 
Red, Hauser, Blue, pretty even as they make their way down the pitch. Got to get in that groove, get some energy. It looks like Hauser going to take the advantage off the top bump. Reed knows that red course can straighten it out down here in the bottom. Hauser makes the turn with four or five gates through the alley. The advantage will be to Hauser then right at the bottom here. Reed's going to be able to try to turn it back, but Hauser, second place finisher, looking strong, touching down with a big advantage. He's going to get the line first. It's going to be Hauser with the win by point three. 458.458 for Hauser in their first two rounds in the round of 16. So Hauser winning it. 458. So Reed got your work cut out for you there. Hauser, you enjoyed the way that 6,300 bucks felt in your hands yesterday. Nice job. All ladies back up to the top. Another great shot of the drone there. We'll get going with a ladies round of 16 momentarily. Again, thank you, Mazda. Thank you, Celsius. And thank you, Tough Shed. That's right. Howl's out in the mix. We've got a nice tough shed piggy bank here we're going to throw some coin into. And for you folks watching at home, here come the ladies. Paula Moltson against Tegan Wold. She has the advantage as they swap courses. Then Dorigo and Rask, Milzinski and Harsh, Exenberger, Mangan, Norby Floatkin, Dingsletter, Fredrickson, Nora Brand will go against the Italian Carlotta Marcora. And the final two pack will be Elise Hitter and Tuva Norby. We'll be back in just a minute with more racing. Light this thing's up. The 4th of July, baby. Paula Moulton has a point four. A point. What's the lead she got? Points Max. Max thank you. Blue course ready. Max differential. <laughs> so those blue course doors were open first as we get underway with the second run of the women. Narrow it down to eight. And all men back to the top. Particularly Paula Moulton with that seven tenths advantage built in the doors is out front over Tegan Wool, the rookie on tour. Moulton so successful here over the last couple of years. At Tiles of the World Championship loves it here. 20,000 bucks richer so far. She's on her way to marching into that quarterfinal round as Paula Moulton makes the turn on the blue side over Tegan Wool, the rookie on tour. Got to be a lot to ski against one of the greatest slalom skiers in the world. So both moves on, Uncle Lee. That's right. Looking forward to some summer and some whitewater rafting and some gardening. Her dad is her biggest motivation. Paul Moulton, congrats. You're moving on to the next round. You'll face either Sarah uh, Fabiana Dorigo or Sarah Rask. Dorigo with the advantage after that first run. They've switched courses now. It's going to be Rask on the red course side. So the German Storms will open .418. Out on track she goes. Rask, see what she can do to close the gap. Four tenths, the big one out in front she goes. The German dives down the pitch into the first jump in control. The second run, ooh, wide, rolling up the windows, as we say, for Wold over the jump. Up, up. So Rask takes advantage of that, starts to pull away a strong run. Looks like it's going to be Rask making the bend with a big advantage. Head for the finish line. She'll be moving into the quarterfinals with two gates to go. What out of problem is going to be the German against the American Moulton. Yeah, Dor you know, Dorigo booked a trip here uh, just a couple days before the race started, and it sure paid off well for her. So the German with a first and a second at the World University Games in Placid last year. So she has the skills the German does to take some money here at the World Pro Ski Tour. Up next, Mulzinski and Harsh, Shunk Lee coming Ooh, at us. Yes, I'm excited about that. Hey, all men for the second round, all men, get on the lift now. Get up there. We want to keep this thing moving. All right, the cadence has begun for your tour overall leader, defending champion Aaron Mulzinski with the 3-3-2. Advantage over Caitlin Harsh. Never count Caitlin Harsh out now. Mulzinski getting a little bit low out in the soft stuff up over there. But she touches down with advantage, holding on to that 3-3-2 she had for the first run. Here's a cool zone shot as you get down to the aerodynamic position, making the turn through the alley. So it's Mulzinski pulling away, but Harsh knows she's going to get a little bit of something down here out of the red course. Not going to be enough today. It's going to be Mulzinski 
your overall leader in the World Pro Ski Tour, crossing the line first to move into the quarterfinals. Google Wozinski be facing, determined by this next run. Trisha Mankin and Elena Exenberger coming at you. So. Yeah, Milzinski, something uncharacteristic yesterday, getting knocked out in the round of eight, and she is in the round of eight now. Again, going up against the winner of this next heat, Exenberger or Mangan. You're getting Blue a first round, this all shapes up, and it was Mangan with a .7 advantage from the previous round. They're swapping courses, and, and here we on. go, as the lights go green, out on track, she'll go with that seven tenths of a second advantage advantage for Mangan over Exenberger at the top of the course. U.S. ski team member so strong down the pitch. Oh, tips in there a little bit. Doesn't seem to affect her though. Got to keep the pressure on that outside ski. Get inside that outside ski. Gets away from it, but no problem now. As Mangan with the seven tenths advantage built into the top is taking, taking it away to the bank. She goes into the bottom bump. Mangan in good shape to move into that quarterfinal round to face off against Aaron Molzinski. Yeah, the battle of Mangan and Milzinski next up. I love that the fact that uh, Miss Mangan, inspired by John John Florence, a legendary North Shore surfer who's had great success on the tour and is a free surfer as well. Miss Exenberger, a pleasure to have you out in the mix. Now we set our sights Blue and the drone ready. visuals back up top. Here we go, Kaya Norby, one of the two Norby sisters, going up against Miss yeah. Floken. Advantage to Norby, gates off, here she goes. So Norby. With that big advantage, the maximum differential after the first run. It's out now, soft stuff a little bit there. So Norby in control for this, their first of two runs over the German. Clean and smooth. And with that seven tenths advantage, she's in control of this run. She'll be moving into that quarterfinal round with four or five gates to go. Off the bottom bump, super buttery smooth as she touches down and gets back in the bullet across the line, she goes. And on goes Kaya Norby. Nice job, Kaya. Inching closer to another podium spot like yesterday with your sister. For Leone Floken, nice work. She booked her trip a couple days ago as well. And nice to have you here in the mix. Let's go up top. Denise Dingsletter, Evelina Fredrickson. And it's for it's Dingsletter, point zero seven eight. Slight advantage to the blue gate opening up early against the Swede Fredrickson. Here we go. This be one of the Two closest runs. Carmen Ice and Dexu Perry. Blue course ready. You'll be able to see the difference as Fredrickson now is on the red course side, a point zero seven eight. There's just about one light off, and out of course they go. Good clean start by both these athletes dropping down the pitch. It's Fredrickson on the red side. Looks like she's got a little bit of a gap, but not by much as they drop down the pitch. Starts to stretch it out now into the jump. She puts it down, about dead even twisted as Fredrickson thinks letter on the blue side. Drops into a tuck early, makes the turn. She's going to have the advantage for about two or three gates, and then it'll make the turn back. Ken Fredrickson. <laughs> Excuse me, get back into it here, across the bottom, up, anybody's race, touching all, it's like the red, it's gonna take it here with one gate to go. It's gonna be the red course with the win, 0.287, back and forth it went, Fredrickson moves on. Nice job by the Swede, doing it for CU, nice job, Evelina Fredrickson. You're going up against Kaya Norby, so Battle of Scandinavia coming up next in that round. Now we'll go with Nora Brand from Germany against Carlotta Marcora from Italy. And, and that one, it's a point zero seven four advantage to Nora Brand. Nora's on the blue, and Carlota on the red. Same kind of thing, only, oh, big advantage. She jumps out there, takes advantage of that. The German with a powerful start, leaving the Italian standing behind. Down the pitch they go. A little bit wide there, low pressure. Got to get those skis up on the high line. So, off the jump, German still out front, making their way into the alleyway. So after the completion's run, we're gonna lay some salt down up there. It's the German running away with the hair. We'll get a little bit of back for the Italian here on the turn. But Brand out in front in control. The second run onto the quarterfinal. She will go as they cross the finish line. Nice work, Nora Brand from Munich, Germany. Half Swedish, half German. She'll be advancing on, going up against the winner of the next one, either Tuva Norby or Elise Hitter. You all get a feel for how this works. Thanks to Mazda, thanks to CB Sports. Seiko, all the winners of today's race and yesterday walk away with a new watch on their wrist. That's Prospect by Seiko. Thank you for your support. Don't forget to miss, visit the tent alley down there. All kinds of cool things to check out. The World Pro Ski Tour swag. Susan Jacobs down there. Richard from Jägermeister. Get your herbs and spices yeah. as we Blue go back ready. to the top yeah. e, the last run. Hitter and Norby. Norby with the advantage by seven tenths of a second. She's on the red side. Doors open up. 
and away she goes. Two in RB, number two in the overall standings for the women's tour, and second in the standings for the world championships with 30 points as it's Norby with the advantage. With that advantage built in, the seven tenths of the first run. Odds on fate is Norby here. She makes her way through the alley on the red side. A little bit of soft snow. We're going to take care of that after the men run their second run of the round of 16. So at the bottom jump, it's Norby in control. She'll move into the quarterfinals to face off against Nora Brand. On goes former tour champion Tuva Norby. Yeah, Tuva, a big fan of how that, that overall championship felt a couple years ago. Outdone last year by Milzinski. Both Milzinski and Norby will be in the next round. So again, Molten and Rodrigo, Milzinski and Mangan, Norby and Fredrickson, and Brandon Norby. There's your great eight on the ladies' side of things. When we come back, the men round of eight will start. And uh, round of 16, second run of 16, excuse me. So all men, if you're not up there, get up there. And we'll be back in just a minute. like this shouldn't exist. Something this big, this luxurious, shouldn't move like a Mazda. And yet, it does. Oh my God, it sounds epic as well. This car is an SUV with bragging rights. The three row Mazda CX-90. In the tradition of Montana's pioneering spirit, and born of the same individualism, enthusiasm, and ingenuity that marks the American West, come the most innovative skis in skiing. Peak skis. by Bodie Miller in Bozeman, Montana, with new thinking, unbridled passion, and new technology that promises to forever change the ski industry. I pray there's no reincarnation. Nothing could equal the journey I've had. Everything else would be a boring encore. I was always exploring. Everyone said Taos was unskiable. It was certainly magnificent, but it would be the future site of a grand ski resort. They thought I was mad. They were right. CB Sports is a vintage ski brand that was very popular in the 80s and 90s, created by CB Vaughn, and we are fortunate enough to be able to relaunch that brand into the market in 2022. CB Sports is basically a retro vintage brand from the past being brought into the present. It's got great designs, lines, and features. It's a great old outerwear brand that's made new.
Sweden. Kaya Norby against the Swede Evelina Fredriksson and then Norbrand and Tuva Norby. That is the great eight, or as they say in basketball lingo, the elite eight. But of course, we are not playing hoops. We're sliding on skis here at Taos Ski Valley. This is the World Championship Tour Stop number three. I'm Uncle E alongside Mr. Kevin Clark. Hayden Scott will be doing some interviews a little later on. So far, so good, huh, Clark? Yes, sir. So we're waiting for all the men to get back to the top. Excuse me, to complete the second run of the round of 16. Differentials will be plugged into the start doors to give the advantage to the winner from the first run, the first pair up, Sam Mays and George Steffi. Mays won the first run, narrow, narrow margin, 0-7-3. Courses are running super close now. Is Sam Mays will be on the red course side. George Steffi from the U.S. Ski Team. Sam, your victor yesterday, taking away a whole bunch of dough. Whole bunch of nickels, that's right. Paying them in nickels. And they got to carry it on their plane on their way home. <laughs> we want to thank Peak Skis. If you folks are watching at home, click on the World Pro Ski Tour banner that says Peak Skis, and you can sign up to win. Right now, we're going to the racing. Here it is, George Steffi, Team USA, on the red side. He's behind by .073 by Sam Mays from Belgium. Here we go. So George will be a little bit fresher. Got eliminated earlier round. Sam had to make all of them yesterday to get to the top step of the podium. Strong and young, both these guys, competitors in the World Cup, head to head today in the World Championships. The Mazda GS portion for both men and women. So, they took my Mazda away from me today to do some drone shots coming up the road. <laughs> Where are the keys to that car? Where's that key? They're done with that. Give it back. <laughs> so, they're doing some super cool shots. They're going to chase the car up the road here. So, that'll be fun nice. with the drone. Yeah, these drones have changed everything, including the budget. You don't have to hire a helicopter anymore or uh, run a cable cam. So the drones, thanks again to Axel and Corey, who are our drone operators. That shot right there is brought to you by Price. All the camera guys, great work out there. And uh, David Q in the truck making magic happen. Thanks, guys. George Steffi on the red course. Sam Mays, yesterday's winner from Belgium on the blue course. The winner of this one's going to go to the great eight. Here we go. So on track they go. Sam's doors open fraction a second ahead of George Steffi. Down the pitch they go. Maybe a little bit of an edge. Just the maze as they work their way into the first jump. It's maze with the advantage, touching down. But George knows this red course gets fast down to the bottom here. Can he stop yesterday's champion? Here comes George Steffi. They make the turn. Maze pulls away on that blue course side as it turns. Turns back. Can Steffi turn it around here at the bottom jump? It looks like his maze out front. Here comes Steffi, putting pressure on. He's going to go to the line first. Looks like it's going to be Steffi. Off the line it goes. Oh, oh. It's Steffi winning the run. Point one one zero for George Steffi. What a turnaround. One one zero, Uncle Lee. What? That was a great run. Oh, stopping the number one from yesterday. Unbelievable turn of events. And Watch his photo yeah. finish. And oh. Steffi, knowing he's got to reach, 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 gets it by that much for you folks watching on the screen, and that much is enough. That's what makes pro racing Good so ready. exciting. Yeah. No guessing. Photo finish, here we go. Four check and Solvik after the first one is four check with the advantage. His doors will open up, point six four nine. Can your tour overall champion stop the charge of four check? Four check looking strong, down the pitch he will go. Super powerful was four check and qualifying, outpacing everybody by over a second. He's putting the hammer down now on Sobek. Sobek starting to fall behind. Look at the drone shot as they chase four check into the turn on the blue. He knows that Sobek's going to get some advantage on the red side. Not near enough right now. It's all about your fastest qualifier. Four check touching down with the advantage and heading for home. On he will go to face George Steffi. Yeah, interesting turn of events right there. So Sovet, current tour leader. Now some interesting shenanigans will be put forth as the next battle, Ankeny and Anger. We're going to talk about that in just a minute. Let's focus on this race and not right now on the overall tour points. So ben Benny Anger up against Michael Ankeny. Ankeny on the left-hand side. His gate will open. He's got .478 advantage. Here we go with the next duel. Lots All right, of here excitement. goes the Joker. Back in the tails of the skis, and he's so powerful. He got more than .478 out on him. Down the track he goes. That's a super strong start. Ankeny sees, ooh, a little bit of a wobble there. Losing the outside ski for a second, but it's Ankeny out in front. This is where he'll really
really be able to work the ski, try to get some advantage even more as he makes the turn on the blue course side. Number two in the overall standings, Mike Galankini, been with us in 2017, 29 years old, former U.S. ski team member and national slalom champion. Ankeny getting a win in a big way over the over the Austrian. On goes the American, Michael Ankeny. So, yeah, using that eight years of U.S. team experience, his training there at Dartmouth, an English and an economics major, and he's working on the economies of scale right now. Gives a little bit of love to anger, says, I'm moving on, and I'm going to go up against either Schmid or Tassius. So, the drone getting resituated back up top again. Fantastic shots. Bluebird, beautiful day. Red Alexander red. Schmidt on the red. Blue of course, the German over, up against the Spaniard. Yep. To see us on the blue, the advantage of this one going to Schmidt. So Schmidt stores opening first on the red side, but to see us right there, super quick. Schmidt didn't take advantage of the advantage that he had at the top. The Spaniard looks like he has the edge. Dropping down the pitch into the first jump. It's a Spaniard with the advantage on the blue side. He needs to really work it if he wants to hang on to it as to cease. Over Schmidt, Schmidt yesterday was on the podium. Here comes to cease around the right footer into the jump. He has the advantage. Looks like he has enough right now to hold on to it. He gets super quick for the red course right here. Not going to be enough today. The Spaniard goes into the quarterfinals to face Michael Ankeny. You know, that's the beauty of this head-to-head, -head, Kev. You get uh, you don't know who you're going to be paired up against. And uh, yesterday it was not to see his day as he was knocked out relatively early. Schmidt made it to the final four. Not to be the case today. So to, de to see us, the Spaniard moves on. And we move on to Schmidiger and Patrick Kenny. So here's another upset in the making. Schmidiger in the number two spot in the overall yesterday, top on the podium. Pete uh, Kenny with the advantage, 6-9-1. He's on the red side. Let's see what the U.S. ski team member can do against the ski. With Reno Schmidiger, and there goes Patrick Kenny. Powerful start. Knows he's got a lot of work to do to hold back Reno Schmidiger. Could this be another upset in the making? Kenny, no stranger to Schmidiger as they race in the World Cup together all season long. Kenny looking powerful through the flat section of the course. Makes the left footer into the alley. They go. Here comes Reno, but it looks like it's going to be Patrick turning around here over Reno at the bottom. It's going to be the American with the advantage. Going to get to the line first. Out goes Schmidiger. On goes Patrick Kenny. Another American into the quarterfinals at Steffi Ang. Kenny, and now Patrick Kenny. Whoop, whoop. Way to go, Kenny. Love that red, white, and blue on the side on the hip on the shoulder. Well done, young man. Reto, you're going to be sidelined and watch the rest of the racing, but that's the way it goes, head-to-head -head style. All right, Team USA, and the representative of Taos, River Radimus. He is going to be featured in this next one with a strong German, Mr. Frost, and a slight advantage will go to Frost point zero seven five. Not too much. Just looking at that drone shot, people are skiing the heck out of that Kachina Ridge up there. It's all tracked up now. Yeah. <laughs> and people had to salivate over that powder for a couple oh, of days God. here. Five days, it just sat there. Okay, River Radimus, he's on the left-hand side. You can see him rocking the Taos colors proudly. Team USA. And then German, 24-year-old uh, Roman Frost, who has a slight advantage here. You're barely going to see it as the lights change and the gates open. Can Radimus be another American in the final eight? Or is it going to be the German who's been so strong all season long? He has the advantage, but Uncle Lee said only 0 .075 for Frost. So River's got to time it perfectly against the German out of track. They go. Nice start. German start down. He goes. Radimus trying to straighten out that top of the blue course side. He knows he's got a tough competitor on his hands at Frost. Radimus with huge success. A little bit wide there out in the soft snow as Radimus may touch down. Radimus. Looks like he's trailing a little bit here. Into the blue section he goes, trying to keep the momentum up. up, up, up. He drops down into his tuck, the American out in front. He knows that Frost will get it back at the bottom here. It's still Radimus with the advantage over the bottom jump. He touches down first. Here comes Frost to the finish line. Looks like it's going to be Radimus first across. He goes, oh, that's a three. close one. Radimus with the win. Zero, four, one. Oh, Radimus, <laughs> another American into the quarterfinals. On goes River. And he will feature his teammate, who uh, he's raced with for quite some time, Patrick Kenny in the oh, really? next That's one. In there. Forgot that. That's a tough one. So USA, USA, the next one. One will be eliminated, but look at this finish. .04, that's just half of a blink of an eye. Oh, and that's what the key of training is. Get that arm, do your stretching in the morning, get the hand out front. All athletes back up to the top, we're gonna need a course slip. All athletes to the top, we're gonna lay a little salt down. 
We're ready for more racing, folks. Hope you're enjoying Super yourselves training. here at Taos. Yeah. It's Lua Travel from Switzerland up against Jan Zabistron from the Czech Republic. Who's got the lead? Zabistron carrying that point three seven eight. Out he goes. New to the format, but he really got the jump. Archival down the pitch they go. It's Zabistran with the advantage in a big way, really loose. Using those long legs as levers to get some speed out of it. He's just a ripping into the right left footer, into the alley he goes. We're gonna lay some salt down up there after this run to firm it up. Is in control this run in a big way. Looks like it's gonna be Zabistran moving it to last of the two. Brackets here, quarterfinals on goes Jan Zabistran. Zabistran, Zabistran. Well done, young man from Chechia. Uh, did you know, two-time Olympian, he also is a big fan of darts. That's uh, Britain's most popular game. Did you know, darts, bar game that is, because there's only so few. Zabistran, we'll see you throwing darts at the next competitor. It's gonna be either Eric Reed or this man, Raphael Hauser. Hauser, who won yesterday. And it's a battle between Canada and Austria, off and running shortly. Point four five eight for Hauser on the red course. Doors open up. Here comes Eric Reed. No stranger to the dual format. Skiing so well with his brother here last year. Let's see if Reed can make up the gap here. He's on the blue course side. Down the pitch you go. Reed in good control. Top of the turn. Here comes Eric Reed. Pulling alongside now. Made up that 4-5-8. Advantage now. First one to the finish line. Going to take it home. Into the turn they go. Drone chasing on the blue course. That long arc. Open gate. Into the turn. This is where the red course. Hauser may get it back. Reed not giving him any quarters. They touch down. Oh, it's Hauser now with the advantage. That red course picks up at the bottom. On goes. Yesterday, second place finisher, Raphael Hauser. Hauser from the Tyrol region of Austria, the 26 year old. He is a police officer and a member of the Austrian national team. All athletes, head back up to the top. And if you're a spectator, we love having you here. Go to, to, go to the Kachita Sports, spend 10 bucks on the raffle, get a cowbell while they last. It's for working on wellness. Again, go to the Kachina Sports in the building where all the noise is coming from, a nonprofit charity benefiting children in New Mexico. When we come back, we'll have the ladies of top the great eight as we whittle it down, getting ready to crown a king and a queen here at the World Championships. So while you're taking a break there, stop down to our midway. See all the folks, our sponsors. DNA vibe down there with Celsius and World Pro Ski Tour merch tent. And we got Roger from Jägermeister out there. Lots of great sponsors down there. Stop down. Oh, it looks like Pam Fletcher out there side slipping the course. I just see her drop out. So stick with us for a while. We're going to put some, some uh, buffing on the course. There's Tamara McKinney side slipping the course. So great to have these legends here. They want to be involved, get out there, put the buff on the track like they had for them so many years ago. So, so many great veterans. Welcome to the World Pro Ski Tour Finals and World Championships here at Taos, brought to you by Mazda. By the way, all male, all men that advance, we will need you at the bottom to do an introduction. All men at the bottom who have advanced, please stay at the bottom and we will do introductions there. Women, you're gonna go to the start. All women who advance, the top eight, to the start, please.
introductions coming up after our course maintenance. So all men, your top eight men, need to hang out in the finish. That's Steffi Forcheck, Ankeny Tassis, Kenny Radimus, Zabastran, and Hauser. Those guys will be introduced from the finish corral like we did yesterday. With those young athletes, super cool. They'll have the athletes be part of the introduction. And the ladies will be introduced from the top. We will line them up according to the pairings as they'll come out on track. So ladies introduced from the top, men from the bottom. So to give you an update, what we're doing right now is we are going to put salt down on the alleyway section, which makes the snow freeze, believe it or not. So we're going to slip the course, put the salt down, wait a few minutes for that salt to set up, and you're going to have a super hard track up there for those athletes. So men, advancing athletes, stay in the finish corral for introductions. The women, top eight, to the top of the mountain for introductions. So check out the midway, get something to eat. Check out some of the drink options down in the tent there. We got guys from Jägermeister and Termana Tequila. We have Celsius, so lots of great different flavors, but a can in your hand. Athleticism, there's something called sportinsurance.com. Were you aware of this? I have <laughs> one of my most favorite hats. I don't have it on right now, but a sports insurance hat. I love the hat. Did he get All the flags on the side, World Pro Ski Tour, you know, championship towels. And did Milzinski cool. sign it? Did, did oh, Aaron? That's a great idea. That's a great idea with a silver, silver marker. The silver Sharpie. Yeah. So sportsinsurance.com. Break down what went down last night with the uh, sports insurance team. First of all, on the ladies' side of things, you've got Aaron Milzinski and the Norby uh, sisters in the mix. So three of the eight are uh, part of the sports insurance team. That's exciting. But how was the uh, how was the shindig last night? So every year we do a athletes dinner that the girls on our team get to pick their friends to come and join us. So we had uh, 28 with us last night at the 192 back room, which was great. And uh, we uh, fed them, gave them a bunch of wine, and they loved it. And it was fun to see a whole bunch of kids that were hungry and ate well. And that's so cool you use that credit card that you found at the top of the Kachina uh, Peak last night, right? Had your name on it, so. <laughs> I canceled that right away, so we're excited about that. Too late. Too late. Yeah, thanks to sportsinsurance.com, one of our integral sponsors, right now enjoying a nice glass of, is that white Zinfandel you're having? Is that a nice Chardonnay? Uh, no, it's a Sauvignon Blanc, thank you. Right, this one in New Mexico. And I'm, I'm, if I'm not mistaken, Michael Spencer has shown up. Michael, what? In the, you're growing the beard out, you're like living living your best life. Who you who you got here, who you represent? Let me guess, let me guess this. River Adamus and who else? That's it, <clears throat> River's my boy. Yeah, just what, what else do you need? I didn't see you at Palisades this year when you took third place. I don't believe you were there. I would have I sussed you out. I was not there. It was a very disappointing uh, opportunity to have been missed. But, you know, it happens. I'll, I'll be at the one he wins. That, that, exactly. That's it. That was, I was just telling could Clarky. Could it be today? It could be today. 20 That's right. grand. Everybody's hungry for that 20 grand. <laughs> yeah. I was telling Clarky that that was one of the highlights of my season, uh, not only seeing uh, a podium on U.S. soil, but River came across, and we were on the VIP structure there, and everyone was jump. Everyone had had a few already at that point. People were jumping up and down, and I don't know if that structure was built for that much jumping up and down. All the bottles of alcohol were falling down, and it was it was spectacular. What what? Uh, since you get a, a firsthand conversation with River all the time, did he allude to how good that felt for him? Oh yeah, I mean it was everything he's been wanting, you know, and especially to do it on home soil, it couldn't have played out more perfect for him. So yeah, it, I mean talking about it gives. I wasn't even there, and I still get chills about it. It's pretty special. Yeah, he's, he's like the best human in the world, so you always got to root for him. Yeah, we uh, you get sense something was different. We did the bib draw the night before, and he uh, we talked about his hair, and his hair was back to its normal color. And he said, you know, I'm focusing on my racing, not so much my hair. You'd see that the ego had been removed a little bit, and the focus was put forth on the racing, and he delivered the next day. It was it was really neat. Oh yeah, I I I gotta think though that the there's gonna be some hair color coming out again, maybe in the next year or so. Fleischer did it for years, right? And River just followed suit. Uh, and also, uh, most recently, last week, he walked away with the GS title up in Sun Valley at the Nationals. How was that? That's pretty special. Back to back, Super G and GS, you know, last week. So that was pretty, pretty amazing. I was, I was about to text him and be like, 
dude, if you go for the trifecta, I'll give you a thousand bucks for your foundation. But he was like, nope, I'm on my way to Taos. He saw the storm rolling in and he's like, I'm powder skiing. Yeah, he wisely got out of there. And I'll tell you what, that track, I was up there for the Nationals and that Super G and what they're going to be doing for the downhill for the World Cup finals next year, they're getting rid of all sorts of trees, they're redirecting it. But that fadeaway, did you see that from the top of the, it's, it's an unbelievable track, something new. Three of the next five years, World Cup finals are going to be in Sun Valley. That's pretty neat. That's going to be so special. What a good, you know, what a classic place to have something like that. You know, one of the meccas of where the heart of skiing started in the U.S. So that'll be really special. So some of the earliest pro ski races ever in Sun Valley. The old lift is up over by... Uh, in town, what's the area in town there? Yeah, uh, we went and saw it. The, uh, the the first lift in North America built for mining, not for skiing. Billy Kidd, Spider yeah. Savage, Tyler Palmer, some of the greats. Keeley was there. So I spent 18 years announcing the Jans Cup in Sun Valley. In the That's Dubai. impressive. The, where the uh, Nationals were Michael Ankeny took the slalom championship several years ago. So I love Sun Valley. Such great people up there. Arnold is always there. You know, Clint Eastwood used to walk into Apples and hang out like in the boys at Apples, like, Clint, what's up? What a bud? Yeah. So super special place. That'll be so cool. That world championships there. I'm looking forward to that. All right, we're going to take a small break right now to catch a breather, have a Celsius, and uh, who knows, maybe a shot of Jaeger. Someone's going to, I'm sure. We'll be back with more race in just a bit. Stick with us. Isn't that a beautiful shot on screen right there? There's eight beautiful ladies, extremely talented. All of them ski better than you. That's right. Let's get <laughs> going here with a great eight from Taos Ski Valley, New Mexico. This is the World Championships. There's the final eight. We're starting things off with a lady who took away $20,000 and 100 more for the speed run yesterday. Team USA, the pride of Prior Lake, Minnesota. Give it up for Paula Moulton. Facing off against the German rookie, Fabiana Rigo, with a big smile on her face and hands in the air. And this young lady, four-time Olympian out of Georgian Peaks, she claims all of her goodness from Collingwood, Canada. 33 years young, last year's tour champion. Give it up for Aaron Melzinski. And for the U.S. ski team, fourth place yesterday, it's going to be Trisha Mangan. Look at his smile. Bluebird skies behind him. One of two sisters from Oslo, Norway, 24 years young, from the University of Utah European Cup overall GS winner. She's afraid of spiders, folks. That's right, give it for third place yesterday, Kaya Norby. So she'll be facing off against the Swede, Evelina Fredriksson, giving a big wave for everybody at home. 
And next up, half German, half Swedish, representing Germany from Munich. Put your hands together for the 23-year-old Miss Norbrand. And up next, your final racer. Second place yesterday, former tour champion, Tuba Norby. A little dance there, big smiles on all these final eight ladies. So over to the men's side now we will go. They're all lined up in the finished corral here as we watch the girls at the top. We'll zoom in on the men and start that introduction. Here we go, and they got the young athletes with them. Take it away, Uncle Lee. All right, from New Hampshire, part of the U.S. Ski Team, Stratton Mountain School, Dartmouth, where he got his education. He's not afraid to throw it and lay it on down. George Steffi. Yeah, George. That young athlete with him, putting on a little show for everybody. And it's the big, tall, fastest qualifier in the Czech Republic, Philippe Forchek. One. Here's Forchek. Fast. He fist pump with Forchek. He was so fast in qualifying. Yeah, <laughs> ripping the air ski. <laughs> I like it. Ripping that atomic guitar. Oh, give it up for this dude, the Joker. And he's not afraid to throw it on down. From Dartmouth, he was got right his education. Pony. woo -hoo! Picking it up the pace. Give us a big smile, Joker. Please welcome from the USA, Michael Ankeny. Oh, here we go, the Get Joker. Re Get ready for the Masters. Oh. Nice drive, all the way to the green. Right Goes in the lumber like yard. <laughs> <laughs> He'll be facing off against the Spaniard, Alex Pote Tassis. Give the big bull run out to the middle of the ring. Tassis, the Spaniard. That's yeah. right. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Double pole plant with a single pole. From Team Global Racing out of Atatash, New Hampshire. Part of the U.S. team, 26 years young. Got his uh, teeth cut at Burke Mountain Academy. UNH is where he got his economic streak. Give it up for Patrick Kenny. Patrick Kenny looking good. Oh, look at this. What's he going to go? Well, pumping it up. Some squats oh. for Kenny. Getting psyched for this run. He's going to have a run against one of his former teammates. Giving a piggyback ride. It's River Radimus. Skiing out of Taos, New Mexico. Taos Ski Valley. It's River Radimus. The weight of Taos on his back, literally <laughs> and figuratively. I love it. I'm loving this dude from Chechia, from Chomoton, uh, Chechia, 26 years of age, studying wood processing for his master's at Czech University of Prague. Put your hands together for the two-time <laughs> Olympian, Jan Zabistran. Trying to do a little kick up there. Zabistran leaves the corral in second place yesterday. Raphael Hauser from Austria. So those are the eight advancing athletes. The women are at the top. We're going to toss the break. We'll line them up while we let the salt settle in there. Firm up the track in the alley and get underway with the first runs of the quarterfinals. Here's Taos, the GS portion, brought to you by Mazda.
ladies and gentlemen, race man Paul Chase inside this small little break while we let the salt set up on the course. We'll be back to racing in about 10 minutes time. Right now, we do want to remind you all, working on wellness, head into Kachina Sports. See where those tents are as you're working your way to the lift? Just above the tents on the right-hand side, there's a store. It's called Kachina Sports. You go in there, you drop 10 American dollars, you get a raffle ticket. You put your name on it. You might get a cowbell if they still have any. $26,000 in prizes available for that raffle. So feel free to go in there and do it for a nonprofit charity benefiting the children of New Mexico. Thanks so much for making it happen. And uh, again, $10 gets you a cowbell and a raffle ticket. Need not be present to win. Drawing starts about an hour ago in Kachina Sports. Big thanks goes out to the governor, Michelle Luan Grisham. Who, she was here yesterday supporting all things skiing and racing and all things New Mexico. Her, 30, her second term of, of, uh, in office was a really del real delight to have her in the mix. We remind you all that uh, Peak Skis, they have a free pair of skis. I said free with two E's for Peak Skis. If you're watching online, you can just click on the banner that says Peak Skis on the Facebook page. If you want to do this on your phone while you're sitting here in the stands or on the chairlift, go to World Pro Ski Tour page on Facebook and look and find the Peak Skis giveaway. And you obviously need not be present to win for that one. They'll pick it out. They gave away a pair yesterday. They're giving away a pair today. You pick either a 88, a 98, a 104, or a 110. And trust me when I say those skis rip. From Bozeman, Montana, built by Bodie Miller and company, Andy Worth, Chris Davenport, JT Holmes, and Michelle Parker, they all have signature skis. Andy's just the integral piece of the puzzle that keeps it together. Thanks so much, Peak Skis. As well, Celsius. Go get yourself some energy drinks. That will ex essential energy accelerates the metabolism, and it burns body fat. Thank you, Celsius. CB Sports, Chris Neary and his posse, his group, rebirthing the legendary brand from the 60s and 70s. You see all sorts of CB banners and all sorts of CB clothing on the, on the work staff, on the cameramen, outfitting us, making us feel good and look good. Thank you, CB Sports. Not to mention Chris Hill and Brad Audette and Chris's lovely bride, Margaret, in the house. They're with Mazda, the CX-50 and the CX-90. My friend next to me, Kevin Clark had to drive the CX-50 from Denver while I had to drive my moped. Hopefully next year I'll get a, a Mazda and be able to... Uh, you, you could draft me. I could draft you, you the moped. Draft. Yeah. <laughs> keep, if you keep, keep up with sport mode. <laughs> I had four horsepower. Yeah, the my... air was flying. Blew his wig right off. <laughs> it did. Yeah, but thanks, Mazda, for being a huge part of this tour. And how about our boy Hal with Tough Shed? You know, Hal's just a dedicated lover of skiing and the best commercials in the business. Thanks, Tough shit. Look at the ski with Hal next week when we go back up into Colorado. We got the uh, Tough Shed little piggy bank out front, the Tough Shed up by the VIP area. So check out Tough Sheds. You can, you can go online and design whatever you want. I think my wife and I are going to do a garden shed for her this year. So check it out, Tough Shed. Build whatever you want. Super cool. Yeah, indeed. In sportsinsurance.com, we mentioned earlier that uh, three of the eight ladies remaining, Miss Milzinski and the Norby sisters, are part of the sports insurance team. If you need insurance for sporting needs, if you're competing and you don't have insurance, sportsinsurance.com is built out directly for that. How about Surefoot? You need some, you need oh, some, uh, some footwork done with your boots, don't you? boys in Colorado. Get myself a fresh set of boots and some new footbeds to try to take the pressure off the, the foot. You gotta have good well-fitting boots if you expect to ski well and want any pressure on the foot in any spots no bunions no no arch good arch support good heel pocket keep you tight in the boot see the guys at surefoot it's the steering device that manages the lever which is known as your ski without a good boot you're not able to make a great turn that's just a fact i got finally got my son into some fantastic boots right like really well fit for the first time after about two decades of suffering, he's like, Dad, how come you've been holding out on me? I go, you could have gone to a store yourself, son, yeah. but you know, you always, he always relied on hand-me-downs, but here you go, and his skiing oh. improved literally in four runs. The pain of it all in ski racing with plug boots, as they're oh. called, cool. super, super stiff, lace-on bladders with nothing but tissue paper between the bladder oh. and the shell. These guys run cranking them all the time, but boy, it's the way you get the power to the ski. Yep. With a good rugged boot and a properly fit boot. 
So what, short foot. What time is it? You know what time it is? It's Seiko time. Seiko time. Every second counts with Seiko. Yep. More watches to be handed out today. Those guys always love that. And Jill comes up on stage and hands out the Seiko watches to the winners. So great sponsors. You know who we haven't plugged enough of is Reliable Racing. I'll go back into the 90s when we developed the sport of skier cross, and I still have the original bib of the skier cross world championships and the Lord of the Boards. I reached out to the Jacobs family and Reliable Racing, and they made everything for us from the fencing to the, the control gates and the panels to the bibs. Reliable Racing been around since 70. How, how long? Oh, Since God, the 70s? 60s, I believe. In the 60s, yeah. So his, yeah, so his father, Tom Jacobs, huge fan of the sport. He was, you know, supporting us back in the 80s when we had the tour with the breakaway gates and, again, all the fencing. And you can find John's wife, Susan, down at the merchandise tent. She's always getting the swag out there to the folks, hats and T-shirts. And so stop by and see Susan in the, in the tent area. So... So I was at the Reliable Racing store a couple weeks ago, and he has some super cool old-school skis and all kinds of really neat museum-quality pieces from the beginning of skiing. So they've been into it forever. It's a beautiful thing. Leitner Poma, you folks that are on the chairlift right now, put your hands in the air if you can hear the sound system. If you're on that new chairlift right there, it was an optical illusion. I got on that. I looked at it when I got here. I'm like, did they move that thing over to the right from last year? Yeah, it's a whole new lift, and it's twice as fast as it was. So give us that opportunity to keep the flow going here as the athletes speed back to the top. We put the salt down. You probably saw them in the finish corral. If you're hanging, hanging around the VIP area going, what are they doing? They're throwing some sort of thing on the course, and it's salt or a, 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 a chemical that makes the snow firm up. So that will stay solid for quite a while to come. We gotta let, let it kick, as we say, let it get hard. And then we'll start that first run of the women's quarterfinals. We'll be back in a few minutes, folks. So you get some food, get some hydration, put the sunscreen on, and love the one you're with. Happy Easter weekend, happy springtime here at Taos Ski Valley for the World Championships of the World Pro Ski Tour.
Rogers is here. Oh, wait. In, uh, Paul Molson is on the gate. Would you look at this? We got racing going. The great eight. Paul Molson. She took a victory yesterday in $20,000 richer. She is. And Fabiana Dorigo from Munich, Germany. She's got a work cut out for her. She's on the blue course. Here we hey, go. Here the go. great eight. I'm Uncle Lee alongside Kevin Clark. Right, the fun begins now. Blue course hey. First round of round 16. Or round eight. The doors will open simultaneously for these two. And once we have established that difference, oh, the German gets a strong start over Molson on the blue course. Down the pitch they go. Slight advantage on the blue course side as they make the turn, heading to the jump. Here comes Paula Molson on the red. As she starts to make up a gap, a little bit twisted off the jump. The American, yesterday's winner in the slalom, coming alongside through the alley they go. We know the blue course takes a little bit of an advantage here, but then it turns back. Here comes Bolson against Dorigo at the jump. Looks like it's going to be Reed who tucked the jump first. Here comes Bolson charging to the line. She's going to get it done. Across the line she goes. It's Bolson winning it by a zero. One six. Oh, Point come zero, on now. One six. You can't even blink that quick. Point zero one six. Molson, point zero one six. So anybody's race when they go back to the top and switch courses with margins like that. Awesome close racing. Here's the replay. Into the finish line they go. A little bit wide on the blue course, but Molson straightens it out. Oh, look at that. So there's where the stretching. Just reach. That's where your yoga comes into play right there. All right, Milzinski in Mangan. This is the next battle. You see Milzinski, the Blue defending tour champion, current tour leader. She's from Canada. She's on the red side. Trisha Mangan, U.S. team member. Great season. She's on the blue. Oh, Here they go. Check, they go. Coming down the pitch. It's man getting fourth place yesterday. Milzinski went out earlier, but Milzinski getting bounced around the red side. Into the turn they go. Heading for the first jump. Who's going to have the advantage? Looks like about dead even. Maybe a slight edge. For Mangan, here comes the drone shot, chasing him through the corner into the alley. They go. Mozinski trails. We know what happens on the red course down here. We saw it happen before. Here comes Mozinski alongside. It's going to be a close one again at the line. It's going to be Mozinski with the reach. 0 0.150, 0 0.150. Boy, that salt they put down up there in the modifications Barrett Stein made on the course and put this thing at a dead even on each side of the track. Here we go with the free run. Watch how in the blue course, trying to straighten it out, but the red's a little bit quicker at these last two gates. Here comes the reach. And Milzinski gets it done by about a ski's length. Back to the top we go, Uncle Lee. That is a tenth of a second, another blink of the eye. We're having a peek up top now, the red course, all redded out in the jersey and her kit. That's Kaya Norby representing Oslo, Norway, one of the two Norby sisters. Then you got a Swede, the 24-year-old that got her cut her teeth at Colorado University. This is Evelina Fredrickson, Battle of Scandinavia. Let's take a deep breath, watch the gates drop evenly, and see who takes the advantage. So looking beautiful up there. Look at that Kachina Peak, all skied up now. What a great spring skiing opportunity for the general public. But right now, it's all about racing. It's Norby and Fredrickson, their first of two runs here in the quarterfinals. So they'll back to the top and switch it up. While they're going back up, we'll bring the men into the picture for their first run here in the Mazda. GS portion of the World Championships. Look at the Bluebird Day as we wait for the start cadence. Here we go. Fredrickson on the blue course, and Kaya Norby. More wins to the podium yesterday, sisters on the podium. Pretty cool what's gonna happen today. Here's the first of two runs for these ladies in the quarterfinals, down the pitch they go. Looks like a little bit of an edge on the blue. Too close to call right now. Into the jump they come, it's the blue course. Touching down, great about dead even. Into the turn, they'll go through the alley with that nice hard salted snow, picking up speed. And the blue course, but here comes Norby. No, she's going to get it back at the bottom here. Into the turn, heading for the jump. Looks like Norby going to touch down first. Race to the finish, going to go to the red side, and it's walk wide to go. Point two seven five for Kaya Norby. Kaya Norby putting down the law of the land. Although she's afraid of spiders, not afraid to come across the finish line first over Evelina Fredrickson. They'll head back up and they'll swap sides and you get a feel for how this works. There's another beautiful shot for you folks that are watching on Facebook. Welcome in no matter where you are in the world. 
This is the World Pro Ski Tour, third stop of three for the World Championships here. Nora Brand, she's on the right-hand side, yesterday's runner-up and last year's tour, two years ago tour champion, Tuva Norway from Norway. Here we go. Doors open up, on a track they go. Looks like Tuva gets a little bit of a jump over Brand, the rookie down the pitch they go. It's definitely Norby out in front, staying high and clean. Pressure on the outside ski, starting to stretch it away on the blue course. A little bit high and a jump there for Brand. The German is the drone shot comes into play around the turn, that long left footer. Got to settle in, stay aerodynamic, but still try to get some energy out of the ski. This Norby head for the finish line. Looks like she's going to be strong enough to win it on the blue course inside. It's going to be Norby crossing the line. First, picking up the win. Former champion Tuva Norby with a big win with a 4-1-2 for Tuva. So the Norbus, Norby sisters in the last two races, advantageous. They'll go back up, all eight of them head back up, lickety split. And we will have that rematch for each one of those ladies coming up. And the men will be coming up real quick like. It's going to be Steffi and Forchek, Ankeny and Tassias, Kenny and Radimus, Zabistran and Hauser. So eight men remain. Their first to two runs here in that quarterfinal, as Uncle Lee just alluded to, as we get our cards organized and... Bring you all the pertinent information as these guys make that first run. Doors open evenly on that first run. Who's it going to be? Yeah. Hey, reminder uh, that this is going to be on Fox Sports FS2. This race will be two Sundays from now, April 14th. Yesterday's race will be April 7th. Right now, that's a great aerial view from our drone pilot, Corey and Axel, making sure that thing is flying properly. Let's set the stage. From the Czech Republic, now known as Czechia, Philippe Forchek, one of our fastest racers in the business, going up against George Steffi, Team USA, off and running. First time for Steffi here at the Pro Tour, down the pitch to go. And it's Forchek who gets the jump over Steffi, long and tall, and he's come out from those start gates many times. Steffi trying to stay focused on his own course as Forchek ducks him down first. Steffi knows he's got the red at the bottom to help him out here. Here comes Steffi, he's made up some ground. It's a little bit inside, Steffi keeps working in the red course side. He knows it's going to turn right here. Here comes the American Steffi over Forcheck. He took the advantage away from Forcheck at the jump. It's going to be Steffi at the line. First with the win by point three zero seven for George Steffi. Figuring it out up there is Steffi. Steffi, I'm liking what I'm seeing with those strong piston-like legs, putting that education from Stratton Mountain School in Dartmouth to the test. Steffi figuring out this World Pro Ski Tour in his first adventure here. So needing the women to head back to the top, so they'll be right there when the men complete their first run. Ankeny and Tassius coming out of sea. And let's yeah. go. There you go. The cadence has started for these two guys. Ankeny, the red course. Tassius, blue. Ankeny, super powerful out of start. And to see us no slouch, he's super quick himself. Figured out this pro format earlier this season. Dead even, anchored a little bit wide in the soft snow on the red course. It's to see us with the advantage over the drone shot. Dutching down a little bit ahead of Ankeny. Ankeny needs to work this down as Ducky goes. And they make the turn where the blue course pulls away. Ankeny staying aerodynamic. He's trying to get the power out of the skis as the Spaniard will cross the jump first. Ankeny trying to put straightness in the course. It's going to be to see us at the line first across. He will go with a win. Narrow one, a point one seven four one seven four for Michael Ankeny. One, seven, four. Excellent work there by Tassias from Spain, fending off Ankeny. They'll go back up and swap it around. Ankeny needs to win this thing outright to win the Tour Championship. We'll talk more about that later. Let's get going with Patrick Kenny and River Radimus, Team Couple USA. That's right. Kenny from Atatash on the right-hand side, red course. River Radimus representing Taos on the blue. Looks like about a dead even start. They drop down off the pitch and into the first jump. Looks like Radimus with a little bit of an edge on the blue side is coming alongside. Here comes Kenny in the red course. He knows what happens down here. The drone chasing him again. Radimus down in his truck, trying to stay as aerodynamic and as little edge as possible to let the skis run. Radimus still has the edge. Here comes where the red course quick is out. It's going to be Kenny turning around at the bottom. It's going to be Kenny crossed to the line first, taking the win by a point. Three, four, one for Patrick Kenny. Three, four, one for Kenny. So Kenny applying pressure when needed on River Radimus there. Two guys that spent a lot of time on the U.S. team Here's all over the World Cup. And yeah, Kenny, figuring that out. It just happens from the bump down. Just when you think you got it won, that red course straightens out. As we watch Zabastran behind him, 
is Tomas, one of the red coats. He's our MacGyver from the red coat crew, or yellow coat crew up here. Red, yellow, yellow, they look the same. <laughs> to two Just snow sports school, get it done for us. Zavis, a beautiful day. Zavis ran, Czech Republic on the red. Hazer yesterday, second place on the blue, off and running. It's like it didn't even start as they make the first two turns, dropping down to pitch. Oh, and getting in the inside ski is Hauser on the blue course. Didn't scrub any time. Zavistran on the red. Now looks like he's going to have an advantage, and he knows that the red course gets quicker down here. Through the turn they go. Out in front is Hauser, but Zavistran is going to take that advantage down to the bottom without any mistakes. Zavistran gets his skis back to the snow first. Across the line they go. It's going to be Zavistran with the win. And the differential is .252. 252. 252. All athletes head back up to the top for the second run of the great eight. All athletes back up to the top. Doing a great job. The entire event staff, thank you so much for what you're doing. We're going to take a small break, take a deep breath, regroup ourselves, and come back with the ladies' second round in just a minute here from Taos Ski Valley. A car like this shouldn't exist. Something this big, this luxurious, shouldn't move like a Mazda. And yet, it does. <laughs> oh my God, it sounds epic as well. This car is an SUV with bragging rights. The Free Row Mazda CX-90. There's no reincarnation. Nothing could equal the journey I've had. Everything else would be a boring encore. I was always exploring. Everyone said Taos was unskiable. It was certainly magnificent, but it would be a future site of a grand ski resort. They thought I was mad. As the founders of Surefoot, Bob and Russ Shea are obsessed with creating the perfect ski boot for you because they know that a properly fitted custom ski boot will make you a better skier, whatever level you're at. At Surefoot, they've developed a process that guarantees the perfect... Let's keep it moving here. People want to see action, 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 both live here and online, live streaming. So head on up. Get underway with that second run. The women will start off with their second run of that semifinal quarterfinal round. So back to the top. We'll send all those remaining eight athletes in each division.
we miss it? Are you ready to exit the corral? Yes. Would you look at that? Paul Molson's in the gate with Miss Dorigo. Very tight race earlier. 0 0.016 is the differential. You're not even going to notice it to the naked eye when Paula's gate opens up first. So again, welcome back. This is the second run of the great eight of the ladies here at the World Pro Ski Tour World Championships. Paula Molson, Team USA. She is on the left-hand side. Fabiana Dorigo is on the right-hand side. I'm Uncle Lee alongside Kevin Clark. Here we go with more racing. All right, with the U.S. Ski Team, U.S. USA emboldened on the left leg of Paula Moltzen. She has a narrow advantage. Could Fabiana Dorigo stop the charge of Moltzen? We'll settle up right now, determine who's going to move in the semifinals as the cadence starts. Three more yellow lights, and it goes green out of track to go. Moltzen will go first down the pitch. They go. Moltzen looks like she has a little bit of an edge. Anybody's race as we work their way down the pitch. Trying to stay inside, staying at hard snow. It's Molson now with the advantage. The American and winner yesterday, Molson on the blue. She knows that it's quicker on the red side. She's got to do everything she can to charge out front. Ahead of the German, through the turn, it's Molson out in front. But here's where things start to change as they make the turn. Looks like Molson has that advantage. Off the jump, it's going to be the American. Here comes the German at the line. It's going to be a close one. Across the table, go. The German, oh, the German gets it. Gee, Dorigo was by a second. Wait, one, zero, zero as the course turns on the red side. The pace gets picked up. On goes the German into the semifinals. Who will she be facing? Will it be Milzinski or Mangan? Coming up next, Milzinski with the advantage over on the blue course. Isn't that deceiving, Kev? Wow, it's like a whole gate difference when they come into that turn, but it changes. And for Dorigo, that proved positive. Molson out, Dorigo in. Here we go, Aaron Milzinski. She's on the blue side. Looking up on the red side, it's going to be Trisha Mangan. Battle of Canada versus USA. The advantage, 0.15. 5-0 oh, to Aaron Milzinski. Her gate will open first right about now. Out on track goes the Canadian and your defending champion the last two years leading the tour. Down the pitch they go. What a great shot from the drone. Anybody's race. Bouncing around at the bottom of the rut. You got to get that energy. Here goes Milzinski doing what she knows how to do. She knows she got to get a lot of advantage on the blue side before they make the turn because the red gets quicker. Mangan, who was was a fine racing yesterday, trying to close in on Milzinski. Looks like Milzinski's got enough of a lead. Will it be enough? Here we go again. The chase to the finish line looks going to be the red course again. You know what? So yeah. Mil Mil Milzinski getting knocked out there, and it looks like Trisha Mangan, uh, the recipient of the victory there. The, there's a gate after that blue gate. That that particular gate there seems to be set just a little bit wider or the red gate the red course is just a little bit faster on the bottom part because the last two races have proved such so Mangan will go up against Dorigo and Milzinski is out we're moving on now to one of the two Norby sisters it is Miss Kaya going up against Evelina Fredrickson and they're going to take a minute to load them as they lock it thank you to the yellow coats so there will be and Orby in the semifinals. Will it be one? Will it be two? <laughs> yes. As we wait for Fredrickson to face off against Kaya. Kaya with a strong first run over on that red course. She knows she's got to really get busy and make that advantage come to life for us. Fredrickson on the quicker red course side. The doors open up, and we will be on track to determine who's going into that next oh, pair. Great of start by Kaya. Wow, blowing through that gate. So that's what she needs to do. She needs to stay on track. Stay out of that soft snow up top. She's doing a good job. Here comes the drone chasing this pair down. And it's Norby out in front. Looks like she has a strong lead over Fredrickson. This could be enough for the first win on the blue course in this round of the semifinals, the first run. Kaya Norby on the podium yesterday. Looks like she's going to be heading to the semifinals again. Looks like she's got enough of an advantage right now for Norby to get it done on the blue side. Uh, it goes Kaya Norby over Fredrickson. Fredrickson. Out. Yeah, Norbian. Yeah, Kaya Norby, part of that sports insurance team. Only two remaining now that Milzinski has been knocked off. So will sister Norby join Kaya on this next okay, run? Yeah. We will have to see. And uh, yeah, it looks like you got to be a full gate, a full gate ahead on that blue side before the last turn. And that was Miss Norby showing you how it's done. So, okay, so Tuva now is on the red course. Sister Tuva. 
part of the sports insurance team out of Norway. She's going up against a German, Nora Brand, on the blue course. Who's got the advantage, Kev? So is Tuba now with the red course, and she knows that red course is quick at the bottom. She's just got to not make any mistakes, capitalize on this door opening. Advantage she has with a 4-1-2. Randy Patson starts the cadence now in his Bluebird Day. Looking back at uh, Kachina Bluebird Ridge training. there. Wind whipping off there. Some cool cornices up there. Now it's racing. Lights will go green. Out goes Norby, the German chasing brand. So Norby with a good clean start down the pitch. Keeping your foot in that track. Don't want to get bounced around. Get the energy out of the ski. Here comes Brand on the blue core side. Norby runs a little bit wide over the jump. Tuva. Two years ago, our tour champion makes the turn on the red. Alongside comes Brand. It gets quicker through here as the drone chases him down through the right footer. It's going to be Brand with the advantage at the jump. But we see what happens. Norby touches down. Can she straighten it out enough at the line? It's going to be oh, a tight. Looks like Brand wins the run. Out goes Tuba. Point zero three five. Unbelievable run by Brand to get it done there. So Brand picking up that victory. Uh, she will go to face Tuba's sister in the semifinals. Couple of Germans. go with the rerun, Uncle Lee. Yeah, take a look at this. She's the only one on the outside in the blue able to fend off the red. Just wow, reaching the across. Reach there, boy. Spectacular effort by the German brand taking down the battle of the Nor potential Norby sisters into the semi. So, a couple of Germans, a Norwegian and an American moving in to the final four for the ladies. We'll take a break and come back with the men's final run of the round of eight. Throw it out to the corral to Hayden Scott to interview our final four. Hey, thanks, Clarky. I'm here with uh, Fabiana Dorigo from Germany in her first ever Pro Tour race with a big smile on your face, Fabiana. How does it feel to have come so far today? Oh, it's amazing. I didn't expect like against Paula to to make that till uh, the like the big finals. So I'm very happy about that. <laughs> You're a giant killer, as we say here in America. And Trisha, uh, good racing yesterday, but I know that you weren't happy with fourth place. How do you improve on that today? Uh, yeah, I think that with the Pro Tour, you just have to take it one run at a time. So that's the plan. All right, best of luck to both of you. Uh, Taos, New Mexico, let's have a nice round of applause for our first two semi-finalists. Thank you.
Okay, folks, and now I'm in the finish area with the second two semi-finalists. I'm with Kaya Norbe from Norway and with Nora Brand of Germany. And Nora, you were just saying that uh, you've improved quite a bit since your first appearance on the Pro Tour in Aspen earlier this season. Yeah, this is my first time in the semi-finals, so that's very fun. How do you like the course today? I like it. It's a bit easier than the slalom, so you can take it a bit easier and ski with the group. So it's a lot of fun. Very good, very good. And Nora, you've got to be pretty pleased with your performance so far today. Yeah, I'm super happy. It's been good snow today. I think it was a really good call to salt because uh, now it's holding up really well. And I'm just having fun out there. <laughs> All right, well, we wish you both the best as you go back up uh, for a chance to be in today's big final. Thank you. Thank New Mexico, you. let's have a nice round of applause for our second semi-finalists as they head back up lift four. I want to thank our DJ extraordinaire, Colin McCabe, up high, moving and grooving. Here we are in Taos, elevation oh, a little over 10,000 feet. We got some racing to do here. It's eight dudes vying for four spots. It's going to be George Steffi, Team Look USA Mercury. on the left-hand side. He's Look got a Mercury. slight advantage over Fjordcheck, who's on the red course. The Battle of Chechia versus USA on course right now. Steffi gets a good, strong start. He's going to need it. But a long, tall Fjordcheck on that quicker red course. Down the pitch they go. The U.S. ski team, George Steffi, ripping it, getting in the rut early, and letting it run off the jump. It's going to be Steffi stretching out of the blue course side. Forkcheck lands a little bit wide as Steffi grabs the bullet, makes the turn. Looks like he's got a good, strong lead. Could this be enough for the American to move on into that semifinal round? Steffi a little bit back in the tails of his skis, letting it run. Steffi's in control. It's going to be George Steffi advancing. On goes George Steffi with the U.S. ski team. Who will he be facing? Will it be Ankeny or Tosias? They're coming up next. Ankeny with the advantage there over the Spaniard. Well, Steffi, he got out of that gate lickety split with the lead that he had, and he took that thing wire to wire. Steffi, excellent work you're going on to the final four. And as Clarky just said, you're gonna go up against either the fast Spaniard, Alex Puente Tosias, or the Joker, Michael Ankeny. Big props goes out to the entire Yellow Coats and our race service staff, competition director, extraordinaire Barrett Stein really doing a great job with his staff so many people to thank if you're out there and you're doing it you can hear it thank you merci gracias donke Shane. chin chin so much love plus as they say in Russia big thanks also to Celsius live fit great energy you've had a couple today and feeling the effects of the good stuff CB sports thank you for the clothing for our Staff and the TV crew as well, and Mazda with the CX-50 and the CX-90, great vehicles. We have them on site here, and you'll see some of the great commercials throughout the course of the weekend. What have you learned, Kevin? So, to see us with the advantage now moves to the red course side, which is gonna make it challenging for Michael Ankeny. It's not much of an advantage, but that red course, he's gonna to have to do some magic to beat the Spaniard. So, 
battling for the overall championship of the World Pro Ski Tour is Michael Ankeny against Sovek. He's going to need some magic for Ankeny to turn it around on Sovek. He needs to win the overall. So let's see what happens for Ankeny. Then it's Kenny and Radimus, Zabastran and Hauser. So three more pair to go to narrow it down to the semifinal round. So did I hear you correctly when you're talking with the... Uh... Uh, the goddess Lisa Mutz, one point. I if Ankeny wins this event, he wins the over. He wins by one point. Yeah. <laughs> ifs and buts. Man, ifs and buts. That's right. Ifs. We'll just see what Don't happens. Count him out, man. One race he, at a time. He keeps backing it up and coming, coming out here and winning races like he did in Aspen. So, Ankeny super focused, super powerful out of the start. As we've seen, to see us has really figured this tour out super quickly. When did he join us? Did he join us in he joined, No, he joined us in Bear Valley. Bear Valley was his yeah, first just, event. So. He showed up, and uh, he's from Vieja, España, 29 years of age. He's on the right-hand side. Gates can open earlier for him. And here so goes Ankeny. Track he goes. Really didn't get a jump. He came up against the doors a little bit. Ankeny right there with him down the pitch. Here goes the Spaniard. Right there with Ankeny. Ankeny trying to do everything he can to straighten the course out as much as possible. Ankeny with the advantage. He's going to take the turn first, but we see what happens on the red course side. Here comes the drone, chasing him through the left footer in it to the bottom jump. It's going to be Ankeny with the advantage. Getting the joker straight, not enough. Ankeny touches down first. He's out in front. Is it going to be enough for Ankeny? Oh, it's going to be close, but not going to happen. Right at that last gate to see us gets it done to one, two, seven. Doesn't matter, differential. It's on goes the Spaniard. Oh, it's the third time I've seen it where it looks like coming off the that, that bottom air, the advantage is going to go to blue, but that second to last gate just set a little bit wider and straighter for the red course. You can see it right here. Watch how just a touch wider is the blue gate. And you yeah. see a little straighter angle on the red, especially coming into the finish there and just gets a hand reached across to see us will go on to the next round against Steffi. So super so, close, a one, two, seven. Strong skiing by Ankeny, back to the top. Blue Kitty and River Radimus, Kitty over to blue course side, has the advantage after the first run of a point three, four, seven. Back to the tails of the skis, out goes Patrick Kitty who skied so strong today. Let's see if Kitty can hold on to it and move that final four. Oh, River Radimus out in the soft stuff a little bit up there. Look at Patrick Kenny steam away on the blue course side. River all bust oh, up wow. off the top jump as Kenny railroads away into the turn. Really put every bit of energy he can into that last power turn, the left footer. Here comes Patrick Kenny. Two US ski team members is all Patrick Kenny here as he's going to move into the semifinals. From my alma mater, Adetash is the US ski team member, Patrick Kenny moving on. PK, PK. He had some great looking hats there in Aspen, a big fan club in Aspen and uh, Palisades as well. The PK Posse was in effect, all part of Burke Mountain Academy and UNH. Nice race in there. And the recipient of that victory. Hey, Hosser and Zabistran next up. One of these two is going to go up against Kenny. Who do you think it's going to be, Clarky? I don't know. It's going to be Hauser, who's so fast yesterday over on the red course. But Zavistran has that 2-5-2 two, two advantage as he jumps out on cars. Super tall, super long, gets some great pushes. Out of the start he goes. Really gets a good high edge angle. Top of the turn, working to ski big time is Zavistran. Kenny hold off Hauser down, in the, down here at the bottom. Zavistran at a big margin as he makes the turn. It looks like it's going to be Zavistran. We got to get all the way to finish to determine that. Zavistran at the jump with a big advantage. Into the finish line he goes. Another new athlete into the semifinals goes Jan Zavistran. You know, just talking here with Briar, it's nice to see just a whole bunch of new, different names into the Final Four, and that's what happens when we're talking uh, World Pro Ski Tour, right? So true. We're mixing it up. We're seeing new names in here, and that means new guys on top of the podium, new ladies on top of the podium. So it's going to be an amazing day, no matter the outcome, and congratulations to all these athletes moving on. Beautiful work. Briar Schreiber and the team, John Franklin as well, Lisa Mutz, the entire back end of the staff doing a bang up job behind the scenes. We thank you very much. Colleen Stewart as well. And of course, our spirit animal, Ed Rogers. We're going to go to a break right now. Take a breather and get back to you with the final four of the ladies followed by the men.
Hey, thanks, Taos, New Mexico. Now I'm in the finish area with the first semi-final. The semi-final is about to go up, and that is George Steffi from the United States with a superb scintillating performance. Um, and I've got to say, George, you had a real big breakthrough in Palisades Tahoe on the World Cup level, and from then, you've just been going up and up. Yeah, it's been a fun trajectory. Once you finally break through on the World Cup, it makes it easier to do it again, and uh, hoping the same's the same. The same thing holds true for the Pro Tour. Alex, you had a mini celebration with your Westminster friends just now. You had a fourth place earlier this year in Bear Valley. What's it going to take to make the big final today? I should keep skiing the way I'm doing. I saw him skiing really good, but you never know. I will, I will try really hard and hope I can have a good uh, race. Taos, New Mexico, let's have a nice round of applause for our first men's semi-finalists heading back up lift four now. As we speak, let's wish them some luck. Thank you. Now, folks, I'm with our second semi-finalist getting ready to go up. Patrick, it's a, it's a pretty cool day for Team USA so far. Absolutely. Yesterday was uh, not our best performance, so it's nice to have a couple Americans in the Final Four for sure. And Jan, uh, you've uh, really made some good turns today. Yeah. You've uh, got a big smile on your face. Seems perfect. like you're really enjoying this Taos, New Mexico racetrack. Perfect, perfect. perfect. I love it here. <laughs> Good. He's uh, shamelessly <laughs> plugging his Kessley skis there. So it's going to be Kessley <laughs> versus <laughs> Volkel. Patrick, what do you attribute the um, advancing performances from Team USA uh, this year? Everybody seems to be building in their confidence, both on the World Cup side and here on Pro Tour. Yeah, I think in the US, we're used to a lot of the snow. So uh, we're pretty good in slushy conditions where you got to stick your ski in the groove and ride it. Um, and then, yeah, I think some experience here helps. I did this last year and uh, felt like I had some unfinished business. So I'm happy to be here. Excellent. Jan, without giving away all your secrets, what's it going to take to uh, to knock off Patrick in this next uh, two matchups? Uh, uh, I don't know. I think uh, I will try my uh, 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 fast and uh, we'll see. You'll, you'll try your hardest and you'll uh -huh. go your fastest. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, let's make some noise for our second semi-final going back up to the top. Best of luck to you both and back to you in the studio.
All right, we're back. The first round of the semifinals. Kevin Clark here with Uncle Lee is Hi. super excited to watch these battles continue. The men and the women here, the Mazda GS portion of the World go. Championships of Wind, pushing that Mazda Blue banner Gorsi. back up a little bit as the cadence begins. The first run, Dorigo and Mengen, the American on the blue side, and the German on the red on the track. They call him, looks like the American. Mengen gets a good, strong start, takes away the advantage from the German right at the get-go. So, Dorigo bouncing around on the inside of the rattle belt as the American runs away now. She knows that she'll be on that close to the run. Ooh, a little bit locked in on that outside ski. Here comes Dorigo trying to close the gap on the red side. Down in her tuck is Mangan looking clean and smooth. She's got a good advantage. Looks like she's going to take the advantage of this run. But here comes the German at the line. It's going to be, looks like it's That's close. the advantage that going to Trish Mangan. 0 1 5. Point zero one five, blinking an eye, but she gets it done on the blue. She'll go back to the red, e. That was it. And I'll tell you, Mangan uh, stuck to her game. Fabiana Dorigo, that's what she did against uh, Moulton earlier. She just uh, stuck to her race. That's what it's all about. Kai Norby all redded out in the red course. She's from Oslo, Norway. Next to her from Munich, Germany, Nora Brand. This is her first official uh, semifinal in the World Pro Ski Tour. And they are locked and loaded up top. So pretty interesting. Two Germans here. An American and a Norwegian as we wait for the start cadence for this next pair. Kai on the red course side. Going to have to get it done. Get it done early because you'll switch to the blue. Brand will have the choice or opportunity to... Looks like we're backing them out. What? Snowboard just took out our oh well, the snowboard that... just came under the fence. It took out the finish line beam. Right so, when you think you've seen it all, Kev. Oh yeah, look at that. The whole thing is knocked over up there. The <laughs> cheese wedge, the protection on the beams, knocked down by a snowboard. So well, lots to say about that, but we'll keep it PC. <laughs> yeah. Hey, we're gonna have a small break in just a second time. And uh, we'll be back. Hey, remind you all, Kachina Sports is a place to go do $10 raffles. Go do it and uh, get your tickets for working in, working on wellness. We'll be back in just a minute.
All right, runaway snowboard took out the lights in between rounds. So we'll go back to the top with Kai Norby, Norbrand, Uncle Lee. Just when you think you've seen it all, of all the things it could hit, right? Yeah. All the things get hit, it hits the I beam, right? Just like when you're driving along and there's only one tree on the highway and it's 47 <laughs> miles, you hit the one tree. <laughs> Murphy and his freaking law. Anyway, red course is gonna be uh, Kaya Norby. Yep, red course is Kaya Norby. There she is, totally focused. Yesterday, it was her sister and her that took second and third place. Now only one Norby remains. Then you got a German by the name of Nora Brand, half German, half Swedish. One of these two is gonna go to the, semi, to the finals. They're gonna start evenly. It's Norway on the right, Germany on the left, off and running. Kaya Norby and Nora Brand, pretty even start as they drop down the pitch, as they work the top of the course. Important to stay high, clean, don't get out in the soft snow. Anybody's race, looks like Brand has the advantage on the blue course side. She knows what happens on the red, so she's really gotta stretch out the margin. She'll have her shot at the red the next run around the bench she goes. Looks like the German with a really strong lead. Here comes Norby, aerodynamic and down in the bullet they go, but it's gonna be the German crossing the jump first. Here comes Norby, closing the gap at the finish line. It's oh, gonna close. be Norby winning that's run. close. 34 one thousandths of a second, point zero three four for Norby. Point zero three four. that's gonna make it some interesting racing coming up on the next round there. So Norby taking the slight edge right there. One doing it for the University of Utah. Brand doing it for Colorado, Denver University. And uh, here's a peek at it. You, you, you can't see this with the naked eye. It just happens in those last two turns, maybe the third three turns. There's a close one right there. Well, yeah, there you have it. Norby's hands out in front, and you can see yeah. that she's going to get the advantage there. No reaching there, unfortunately, for Brand. For Brand. Yeah. Hey, big shout out to our entire work staff out here from the Taos Valley Race and Event staff. Uh, thank you very much for all the love, making sure everything's dialed in. The entire World Pro Ski Tour staff. Clark, I know you've been here since uh, last week, and really thank you for all the hard work when all that new snow is here. I've done my years of setup in new snow, and it's it's a thankless job. Thank you. Man, the women's <laughs> rolling straight uphill. We had a lot of grapple coming down, too. Oh, that's Those the worst. pellets of snow, and it was uh, super challenged. Yellow coats right there with us the whole time. Getting the task at hand done. Super, super crew. Bert and Bert? all the guys. Tomas, our MacGyver on the yellow crew. Yeah, dude, he gives us a big wave. And his mom keeping us fed all early on in the week. With Bre meatloaf? Breakfast burritos, yeah. meatloaf sandwiches. So this whole crew has a super passion for the sport of skiing and ski racing in general. I'm, they love having us here. I'm curious if your mom makes meatloaf sandwiches while listening to meatloaf. That would be the ultimate right there. <laughs> look, at, look at George. Yeah. Tell you, buy, buy your mom an eight track of meatloaf and give it to her for Christmas. <laughs> so whenever we needed a tool, whenever we needed a fastener or a nut or a bolt or anything, he was the man. And all these yeah. guys stepped up such a great crew, Vanilla and Chris and just, uh, just so many of them. Thomas, yeah, I, we got a list of people here. Roll, Barrett, roll through them, dude. To Bert, Josh, Thomas, Vanilla, who's Chris, and there's another Chris, a couple of Scots. We got Chris, Romy, who was part of the Taos crew, now part of the uh, the uh, World Pro Ski Tour <laughs> to the crew. Joe, Matt, Mark, Susan Jacobs, George, Richard Rocos. I mean, the list just goes on and on. I haven't seen Richard. I was surprised he wouldn't stop in. He doesn't like the microphone, though. <laughs> it gets doesn't scary. Doesn't want to take any glory away from the athletes. Richard Rocos, my good friend. So. Start the men here in a minute. Also, our camera dudes, the camera that you're looking at right now, that shot, that's Price Weatherall. He's been around the, the globe for a long time. That's right, you're pointing at him right now. Price Weatherall, you got John Smagala. He smags. Corey and Axel are doing a great job with the drone. Gavin, you're in the mix somewhere. Gavin Scott, Nate Purcell, you're in the mix. Darby, <laughs> Darby of 75 years of life experience. He's been shooting a camera longer than most of you people watching have been alive. Darby's down below. He's got the long shot. We got Eric Schwank. What's up, Schwanky boy? And uh, we thank everybody, our utilities, James, Alan, Brett. It's a family affair that we have out here. We are traveling circus, if you will, on the White, the white Snow circus. Circuit. Yep. Here in the Pro Tour. So four men ready to go to determine the first run of the semifinals. Steffi Tassius, Kenny, and Zabistran coming at you. While we're doing thank you, Scott and Bob, the dynamic duo over here, 
Bobby and Scott, the dynamic duo, making sure the graphics and uh, timing are working out well. Liam, Gavin, Colin, Baker, thank you so much, boys, for all your dedication and commitment to all things sound and replays and making it all come together. So another cool drone shot as we look at the athletes. I see, I think I see four guys up there getting ready to slot in. As I see Tassis there moving behind the doors on the blue side. Yeah, let's set the stage here. George Steffi, his first showing of this World Pro Ski Tour. Uh, he's going to be loading on the red side right about now. He's going up against Alex Puente Tassis, who showed up this year at Bear Valley and surprised all of us. And that's the beauty of the World Pro Ski Tour. And Mustachio, we'll call Steffi right there. Stratton Mountain School, he attended Dartmouth. This season alone, three top 30s, boating very well for the New Hampshire native. And he's ready to rock and roll up against the Spaniard. Will he make it to the finals? Coached by our good friend, a former World Post Key Tour champion, Peter Dodge. So Dodge. Peter Dodge. Dodge was coaches of so many of these athletes as Richard Rocco. So, you know, got to mention these guys that have made these careers. Peter Dodge had a post on Instagram with him P skiing on his pair of Olin Mark 5s at Stowe earlier this year. The Mark 5s? He's riding up the chairlift. He's got him held up. Post that picture. I don't know how he turned him, but he's a pretty powerful guy. Here we go. The light's going to go from yellow to green. The first pair here to determine what's going to happen in the semifinal round. Steffi on the red and Tassius on the blue. Down the pitch they go. Pretty even right now. Got to get that team turned clean and keep it out of the snow. As the Spaniard moves out in front of the blue side, he knows he's got to really stretch it out. Here comes Steffi on the red side. As the blue takes the quicker turn, straightens it out. Here comes Steffi and Tassius. Over to the bottom jump, they will go. Looks like it's going to be Steffi with the advantage. Touches down first, stretches it out. The line across he goes. It is advantage for Steffi. 0.369, that's a strong one for Steffi. Steffi, U.S. team member, point. Three six niner getting that power out of that mustache on each one of the turns, doing it for Team Stratton. Nice job, Steffi. All right, now it's going to be Kenny against Zabinstran. Zabistran. Zabistran. How many times can I butcher that one? So Zabistran, blue, Kenny, red, waiting for them to slot in, Uncle Lee. Yeah, so Zabistran coming on new this year, part of the Chechia Mafia. Three golds and one bronze last year at the World University Games in Lake Placid. Did you know that that World University Games, it's the second biggest event besides the Olympics. Just, That's pretty cool. Some fierce competitors there and those so many great college yep. university athletes around the world. Yep, you've got to be presently be enrolled in a university for it to happen, upwards of 2,000 athletes. And it, uh, it's been going on since the 70s every other year, kind of like the World Championships. Anyway, Patrick Kenny, Team USA, out of your neck of the woods that you spent a lot of time out, Team Atatash. Yeah, he came up through our program, starting out as a, as a U10, and on he went to Burke Mountain. And yeah, John. Yes, Zabistran, Kenny. This is the first of two races. They're going to head back up after this, as well as uh, the ladies. We'll see after this. And we're fighting for our right for the finals here. We want to thank our course dying crew. Yeah, looking like just a, a, a slight uh, human issue there. We'll take a small break, gather our thoughts, and see what's going on here. We'll be back in just a minute for the culmination of this great event.
That guy, what's that guy just standing there for? Huh? Is he okay? That guy standing there? Yeah? I don't know, whoever that person is standing there is. Yeah, he's fine. Oh. He's one of our guys. Towel guy. He's awesome. Yeah, he's got a bad shape there, so we pop it every, every yeah. round. Oh, so he's not, so someone else fell. Yeah, yeah, he fell yeah, down, down the alley. Coach. The senior coach oh. fell, he put his eye back on him. He fell in the senior waterfall area. What? He ripped the cap off. And he was like, oh, Hey, we're uh, straightening out the kinks. That's what we're doing. We're not talking yeah. music. We're talking the kinks in the system. Right on. Here we are, the World Pro Ski Tour. World Championship stop three of three this year. We started in Aspen. We went to Bear Valley in Central California, and we're ending up here in Taos Ski Valley for the third year in a row. Chances are, if I was a gambling man, we're coming back next year. What a great new field of athletes like Jan Zabistran and Patrick Kenny. One's representing the Czech Republic sometimes now referred to as Chechia. He's on the blue course. And then Patrick Kenny from New Hampshire, out of Attach, he's on the red course. Compact and powerful, Zabistran long and tall as they do their final focus round here, waiting for the cadence to begin on Kenny and Zabistran, the American, on the US ski team. Focus here, want a big shout out to to Kevin, Kylie, and the girls back home whoop, watching whoop, the race. Hey, Kylie, we miss you. Blue course ready. Oh. So Patrick Kenny had a great group of fans that had PK hats, specific hats for the World Cup when it was here in the States. Right now we're in Taos. Here we go. PK with a good strong start. Down the pitch as equals. First run. Zabastrand dragging a hand as they drop down the pitch. A little bit of an advantage on the blue course side as Zabastrand. Kenny gets inside. Ski out in the soft snow. Kenny's starting to struggle up there a little bit. There's a long, tall Zabastrand on the blue course side. Kenny knows he's going to quicken through the red at the bottom. Of Zabastran really stretching it out. The first of two runs in the semis for the men here in the Mazda GS portion of the World Championship. Zabastran going to be there first. Can he try to close the gap because he knows he's going to that blue side next? Across the line, it's going to be Zabastran with a point five seven nine for Jan Zabastran. Yeah, Kenny had some unfortunate luck before that first air. He just did not have his uh, his his ski set properly. Kind of threw him off, slowed him down, and he's going to have to make up point five seven nine and change against Zabastran when we get to that next round. Back to the top we go for the ladies, E. That's right, our ladies are up there. Dorigo and Mangan, then Kaya Norby and Nora Brand. What a beautiful day, look at that shot. For you folks that are watching at home, nice to have you in the mix, no matter where you are in the world. Yeah. Let me tell you for the crew, this is a blessing because you don't know what a nightmare it is to break this thing down when it's over, when it's raining, when it's windy, <laughs> when it's super cold, or just the fact that every single race we've done this year, the wind has been howling at the top. We had the whole start structure blow over. We had tents blow away, but we fought through it everywhere we went. We we're fully supported by every mountain. This is the cream of the crop on our tour. Bert and his crew, cat drivers, everybody involved from the inside staff to the outside staff, it impossible and the weather gods look how calm it is up there right now oh, that's nice oh my god the wind has died down they got the sunscreen on heavy as we go with Dorigo and Mankin. Mankin with the advantage she's moved over to the red core side the American 
Let's see what she can do. Out of track they go. Good even start. It was only 15 thousandths of a second separating these two. They drop down the pitch. And it's the German on the blue. And it's going to be Mankins charging hard on the red course side. As they settle down after the first jump into the turn. Oh, of course she goes. The German, a costly mistake oh, up there. Boy. Just what Mankin needed. But she was on that red Quaker course. She will move down to the consolation rounds. And on we will go with Mankin into the finals. Yeah, Mangan not stopping. Focusing on her game, knowing she's going to have to race that course one more time up against Norby or Brand. And you can see off that top air, look at Dorigo. Just has a momentary lapse of, uh, of oh, whatever and just misses the set. Not happy there. No. She flaps her arms and disapproval of that simple mistake. So it happens that quick, Kev. Yeah, let's go back up to the top. You're taking a look right now on screen. That is Nora Brand, half German, half Swedish, 23 years of age, from Munich, Germany. Her foe on this run is going to be one of the two Norby sisters from Norway, the 24-year-old Kai Norby. Cut her teeth, NCAA, University of Utah. She's got a point. Zero, three, four, slight advantage. Here we go. Not enough, Funkily. It's going to be a dead even race. And see, we know what... You got to get it done all the way. We saw Brand with trouble up there. Norby out front with a strong first run, second run here in the semis. Putting the pressure on as Brand starting to struggle on the red course side. Here goes Kaya Norby staying clean and smooth. Minimum edge angle, letting the skis run <laughs> through the turn. The blue course really stretching it out over Brand. It's going to be Kaya in the finals. Sets up for the final jump here. Heading for the finish line out in front. It's going to be enough for Kaya with two to go. Across the line, she will go into the finals to face off against Trish Mangan and Brand will get down to the small finals to face. Here you go. The two Germans facing off in that small final lead. Chances are Germans going to finish in third place and fourth. That's it. <laughs> athletes head back up to the top. All athletes right back up to the top. That's the way it goes. So Kaya Norby making it into the finals today. Where yesterday she settled for third place. So Kaya looking to it will improve. Will it be second or first? Well, she's going to have to battle Trisha Mangan. We're going to have ourselves a small break. We'll come back with the men's deciding factor of see who, whether it's going to be Steffi or Tosias or Kenny or Zabby going on to the finals. Back to the top so we can keep the action going for all the folks watching online and gathered in the finish corral. Back to the top we will go. The men with one to go to determine who's going to move into the finals here. Steffi with the advantage over to Sias. They've switched courses, so Steffi's got some work to do on that blue side. Needs to really rip it out of the start gates to hold off that hard charging Spaniard. And then it's Zabastrand with the advantage over Patrick Kenny as he will be on the red course. Kenny will definitely have some work to do on that blue side. Good effort by all four of these athletes battling it out for the finals here in the Mazda GS portion of the World Championships. New Mexico True, great to have them on board. So many great sponsors. Mazda have been ripping around with the CX-50 heading up to Vail with that CX-50 after this. Then Celsius Live Fit. Start my day with a Celsius before I head down to the gym. Sportsinsurance.com, the first one of our sponsors to step up and put a team together. And then Hal from Tough Shed, been with us from the beginning. Good pals probably out there. Enjoying this beautiful day. Reliable racing. Supplying all of the start banner structures and the gates and it's Jägermeister and our friends from Shorefoot been with us for quite a few years 
So many great sponsors. Gorsuch, they hosted us when we were in Aspen. Big thanks to Jeff for, for the continued support. And Revo, got myself some Revo sunglasses and goggles. That's a, a DNA vibe. Got to get that going on my shoulder here to try to recover. Peak skis, and Uncle Lee's been telling you about. Sign it up for those free peak skis all along the JSX, shuttling all the athletes down here from Denver by jet. Super cool JSX and Lightner Palma and that nice new Lightner Palma making his ski race move along at EEF 4K Productions, Hayden Scott and his crew, and of course Taos and everybody here supporting the event. Three years of great history here. Those are our sponsors. Stick with us. The finals coming at you soon. This just in, you're all beautiful. And we're ready for some more racing. Yep, the uh, racing's gonna happen. Okay. Here's how it's gonna happen. You got a Spaniard, Alex Puente Tasillas. He's gonna go up against Team USA Zone, George Steffi. Now Steffi, he has an advantage of .369. That bodes well. But Steffi started on the red course. This time he's gonna go on the blue course, which has proved to be well, not as not as fast, but maybe as fast. Yeah. See how I went on a limb right there? It's it just, it just <laughs> super, super crucial for Steffi to make sure that he maximizes that advantage and hope that to see us as a bobble up there because once you swap sides, but George has a good margin down to the next pair. It's Zabastran over Kenny. He has a 5.79 to Zabastran moving to that red side. So the two U.S. ski team members have some work to do. See if either one of them can move into the final rounds or will they be meeting each other in the Concies? So here we go. Did you know, Randy Patson? Did you know that George Steffi in 2015 at the Stratton Mountain School, he was a chili cook off champion? Did you know? I did not know that. I'm hoping that if he wins, he makes us some chili tonight. That'd be nice. That uh, would be nice. <laughs> he's, See, he's got the fire in his chili right now, though. It's going to be all business for Steffi with that 369 advantage. He's figured out the start as is Tosias. And Tosias, how about this? He's a Westminster freshman at 29 years of age. There's a full, <laughs> full group of Westminster skiers here. Yeah. Team <laughs> Westminster out there, cheering. I'm sure they're cheering for him. But we got the American, George Steffi. Yeah, you want a good, you want a good education and you want to learn how to ski race? Go to Westminster or DU or CU yeah, or University of Utah. Strong ski programs. 
A lot of foreigners in those programs. Yeah, that's it. it. Yeah. All right, he's got those Royce boxing gloves on, ready to go. George okay, Steffi, go. he's Serious got a protection there. <laughs> that's Red right. Ready. Get those gates out to Zive. Out to George right. Steffi ready to rock and roll in the blue. He's got a point three six nine advantage. And Alex points to see us. Hey, doors open up. Up goes Steffi to see us. Not that far behind. He was right on the timing. Down the pitch they go. George. Got the advantage for a while. Oh, to see us runs wide, gets out in the soft stuff. Here we go. Oh, now George goes. Oh, to see us. Into the finals goes George Steffi with a costly mistake. Ooh, like to see us up there. To see us will move down to the consolation round. Here he comes. US ski team member. He doesn't know to see us is gone, so he's hammering away. He's gonna look over his shoulder. He doesn't see him there. On goes George Steffi with a hard fist pump. Super psyched. Battling for that 20 grand USD team member, George Steffi. They watch, watch to see us. Comes off all twisted, running wide, says, I can't get it back. Yeah. Wow, you tough know, break. I'm going to say that uh, that to see us saw the amount of air that Steffi got. He's like, I'm going to match that in a big air capacity. But all oh, hail Jorge. Nice job, George. You're going on to the final. Now, will Patrick Kenny be able to up the ante and overcome the deficit of 0.579 for Jan Zabistran. Here we go. Yeah, Red Corps opens first. Over there. Kenny right there with him though. Not letting him get away. Kenny's nice going to pour it on hard. He knows he's got a lot of work to do against the tall Zabistran. Zabistran out of the soft though. Here comes Kenny. Taking advantage of a mistake by Zabistran. Down off the bump they go. It's Kenny striding away. Trying to pull away in a blue side. It's looking tough for Kenny right now as the drone chases him down the alley. Kenny's out in front. I don't think it's going to be enough as Kenny makes the turn. He's going to have hope for a mistake right here. Touching down off the bottom bump. It's Zabistran at the finish line. He's going to cross first. He's going to win it here. Uh, go Zabistran to face George Steffi and Patrick Kenny to go down to battle for the consolation round. Great racing by the two U.S. ski team members, two Americans in the finals. It's going to be Zabistran, the rookie here with us, to face off against Zabistran. George Steffi. Athletes back to the top as soon as you catch your breath. Long day of pro ski racing as you watch the replay. Patrick Kenny doing everything he can to straighten that blue course side out. Not enough at the end. It's going to be Zabastrana Steffi. All right, our ladies have paid attention and got on the chairlift. Lickety split. Men. Sign your autographs later, do your high fives later, get back on the lift right now because we have more racing to do, limited time today. So we're gonna start with the ladies' small final, which will be Nora Brand and Fabiana Dorigo. Get them loaded shortly here. Big thanks to Mazda, CB Sports, and Celsius. Our winners today walk away with a new Seiko watch, Prospect by Seiko. And we wanna thank them very much. Stick with us after it's all said and done for our award ceremony. We got a lot more racing. Here we go. A couple of Germans going to be loaded in the gates here. It's going to be Dorigo on the red. You're looking at her right now on screen. Nora Brand is going to be in the blue course. Both hailing from Munich, Germany. All right, Dorigo, a police officer. She took a first and a second in the Super G and the GS, respectively, of the World University Games. Over on the left-hand side, that's Nora Brand. And this is one of two races for third and fourth place on it. So down the pitch go the two Germans in those famous zebra strike Boulder suits. Spin the mark of the German team for so long. The blue course now starting to stride away. He's got to get a lot of work done on that blue side as we watch Dorigo. Starts charging on the red, but out front, it's Brand with the advantage on the blue course as they try to pick him up by the camera. There we go, the two Germans. Looks like it's gonna be the red course taking advantage as they make the turn over the bottom jump for the first of two runs in the battle for third and fourth place. Point four seven nine, Dorigo, point four seven nine with the advantage, coming into a haltering stop into the fishnet. Okay, though, that's the important thing. Nice, thank you for the our staff helping out right there. Let's go back up top. And this is the ladies' first run of two finals. Trisha Mangan, Team USA, two-time Olympian. Ready. Not afraid to throw it on down. She's going up against Kaya Norby from Norway. She's on the blue course. Here we go. Oh, Norby with a quick start. Gets the advantage 
over Mangan right from the get-go. She knows she needs every bit of an advantage she can against the powerful Mangan. It's Norby now leads into the jump. Mangan gonna settle in, grab the bullet. Knows that she's gonna get that advantage back here. Norby runs through that alleyway with a drone high overhead as they head for the finish line. Looks like Norby's got enough advantage. Uh, there it goes. The turn happens. Mangan making the turn, gonna win it. Wow. Wins differential. Mangan wins by 3 4 2. Norby will have her chance on the red courses. We'll send them back up. So point three four two for Trisha Mangan. The pride of athletes get back to the top ASAP so we can keep the action rolling. Well done, Miss Mangan. You see her just nice absorption off that bottom air, knowing that that red course on the inside is just a little bit faster. The pride of Buffalo, New York, out of Dartmouth College, Trisha Mangan inching closer to her first ever World Pro Ski Tour victory, and she commanded that one over Kaya Norby. So wait for the men to get back to the top. And we'll take a small break, come back with more race and action from Taos Ski Valley. There's no reincarnation. Nothing could equal the journey I've had. Everything else would be a boring encore. I was always exploring. Everyone said Tao be a woman. It was certainly magnificent, but it would be a future site of a grand ski resort. They thought I was mad. They were right. In the tradition of Montana's pioneering spirit, and born of the same individualism, enthusiasm, and ingenuity that marks the American West, come the most innovative skis in skiing. by Bodie Miller in Bozeman, Montana, with new thinking, unbridled passion, and new technology that promises to forever change the ski industry. As the founders of Surefoot, Bob and Russ Shea are obsessed with creating the perfect ski boot for you because they know that a properly fitted custom ski boot will make you a better skier, whatever level you're at. 
At Surefoot, they've developed a process that guarantees the perfect fit for each customer. And of course, they are obsessed with the process. We have 300 experts in Surefoot on the world that all use the exact same process. Surefoot, better fitting, better skiing. CB Sports is a vintage ski brand that was very popular in the 80s and 90s, created by CB Vaughn, and we are fortunate enough to be able to relaunch that brand into the market in 2022. CB Sports is basically a retro vintage brand from the past being brought into the present. It's got great designs, lines, and features. It's a great old outerwear brand that's made new. For more than half a century, Seiko has been supporting athletes in their efforts to be the best. Now, we want to bring this reliable technology to anyone striving for a goal. Because we understand, a split second can change everything. Keep going forward, prospects. The best nights start with Jägermeister. Made with 56 botanicals, always served ice cold. It will take a miracle to come back from this. Heartbreaking end of the season. But what's this? For the moments when anticipation. Clock's counting down. Five seconds. Three, two, one. Becomes celebration. Jägermeister. Meister the moment. In general, ski racing is a pretty tough sport. Racers ready? Using my DNA vibe has allowed me to train harder, longer, and recover faster. Less days off, more time on the snow, beating my competitors. Having another option to be doing what we love and to continue to race, it just keeps the sport open and keeps you in it. Best deal on the best shed or garage, visit toughshed.com. Did you know we are ready for more racing action? Time for the men's small final, followed by the men's final, ladies' second run of small final, ladies' final. Then men's second run, and then we'll be done. Six runs total remaining. You've been a beautiful crowd. By far the best crowd we've seen here late March on Saturday for the World Pro Ski Tour. I'm Uncle Lee alongside Kevin Clark. Clark, he's been doing this since back in the 80s. I had a mullet when you started doing this, and. And uh, you still don't have, you're timeless. You don't even have any wrinkles. There's a look <laughs> right there at uh, what's going to potentially happen. Uh, uh, it, it, that doesn't read absolutely right, that graphic. So, yeah, that, that final bracket should not be filled in. So basically what's happening here is Patrick Kenny and Alex Puentes to see us will go first. Then Zabistran from the Czech Republic and George Steffi will get a go at the first round of two for the finals. Just as we did with the ladies, so C. they're waiting to follow up the guys once we determine 
By the way, First I am run. looking outside and I'm seeing all the fantastic outfits, the tutus, the pink bunny, all the everybody that's dressed up. We're noticing that. Put your hands in the air and wave them like you just don't care. We love the outfits. Yeah, now on those brackets for you folks that are watching live, that's the way it shapes up. If you've not been to Towski Valley, the base is about nine, just over 9,000 feet. The top of Kachina is 12.5, very steep, very tall before I arrived. But while Mr. Kevin Clark and company arrived, the snow showed up upwards of 50 inches, filled in the area, made it very tough for setup, but it got done. And there's a, cr a shot of, that is not Kachina, that is the back side. And that is a cross valley. I was eyeballing that to do some backcountry, but the wind is howling. It's a loading event, not what you do by yourself in the backcountry. You take someone with you that knows the area, knows what they're doing. So for you folks that are backcountry aficionados, never go alone or let someone know where you're going. Super, super. Got to really trust the patrol to let you know when it's good to go. Yeah, I talked to four guys yesterday that went out there. They said it's all wind slabby, very dangerous right now because the way the wind hit all that new snow. So be careful if you're going to the backcountry. Bring a friend and let people know where you're going. Always wear peeps. Bring your probe and your shovel. Okay, here we go. Up at the top there, we've got to see us on the red chorus. And Kenny on the blue. Randy Patson, get going. Wants to give a big shout out to Kevin Kiley and the good old back and home watching on Kiley. Our start out on track. Patrick Kenny with an awesome start. Leave it to see us. Standing there, he knows he's got to get that done. If he wants that 6,500 or 4,500 bucks in that third place spot. Out front, ripping it. Back to Kenny, get some juice out of the skis now. As Kenny, USCT member, drops down to the bullet, stronger, pulling away. Is Patrick Kenny on the blue course, dominating this first of two runs in the battle for third and fourth is the American. Patrick Kenny across the line first with the advantage of max differential against a Spaniard. Did it pull that off last run? <laughs> yeah, too bad that wasn't in that last run. Point seven, the max differential. I think for Alex Puente to see us off that first air, he had uh, he had thoughts of what happened before we overshot it. But right now, Kenny's primed for that third place spot. That is for third and fourth, folks. We'll set the stage now for the men's first run of two for the finals. Team USA, George Steffi. Three top 30s in the GS this year on the World Cup circuit. That does well for the confidence. He's going up against a 26-year-old from Shomutov, Czech Republic, or Chechia, as they're referring to it now on the maps. Jan Zabistrom. The Czech wants the big Czech. Yes, he does. 20,000 bucks at stake. I've been impressed with this kid skiing. Let's see what happens. Mustachio, George Steffi on screen right there. Yeah, that's right, buddy. Look at his smile. <laughs> Big smile. <laughs> okay, as they say, focus. Blue serious business now. Steffi in the red. Zabastrana in the blue. The first of two runs in the finals here. The Mazda GS portion of the World Championship down the track. Steffi gets a strong start to see us. Or Zabastran right there with them down the pitch they go. Looks like George getting out in the soft stuff a little bit. Zabastran pulling away on the blue course side. He knows he's got to get it done on the blue side of the first run if he expects to hold off. So Steffi on the red. Blue pulls away as they go through the alley. Here comes Steffi on the red course side. They make that right footer turn into the bottom jump. It's Zabastran strong. Two gates to go. Can Steffi turn it around on the first run? It's going to be Zabastran with the win by .358 on the blue course side. Got so the work cut out for him, Punk Lee. Yeah, that's for sure. Great racing by Zavistron. They're taking some deep breaths, some serious elevation here. They're on their ninth, approaching their tenth run of the day. They are really working for that coin. And up top, we're going to get going with the ladies here shortly. You're joining us. If you're just joining us, this is the final part of three days of three stops of this World Pro Ski Tour. The third year in a row we've come to Taos Ski Valley. They've been so kind. And I think this is about the nicest conditions we've had on the final day, Kevin. Yeah, we're deserving one of these after a long winter of snowstorms and cold temperature. And the crew got to love this. So here we go. This is the second run for the consolation round. It's Fabian Dorigo and Nora Brand, two Germans. Fabiana with the advantage. She'll be on 
the blue course. Just run. Her teammate Nora Brand on the red. Yeah, for forty-five hundred bucks for third place, three thousand for fourth. For, for bragging rights, it's back in Deutschland. <laughs> That's right. They're, they both call Munich home. They're both originally from there. Fabiano is a police officer with a couple of medals at the World University Games. She's on the blue course. And Nora Brand, she's half German and half Swedish, attended Denver University. And Dorigo has a current lead of 0.479. So watch red that gate ready. on the blue, blue open up ready. just a little bit before the red. So the lights start for the blue course side for Brand. The two Germans back to the tails of the skis. Out on track she goes with that 479 built into the start doors down the pitch. Got to stay clean and high. Nice little track developing there. You got to put your foot in it and stay in it. Don't want to get in the soft snow. Brand touching down with a strong lead. On Ooh, she gets wide on the first skate after the jump. Puts it in the soft snow. Oh, Brand goes off course. The drone just catching that off course. Goes Nora Brand, so it's going to be Dorigo with the third place finish with $4,500 and Brand on the fourth step of the podium with $3,000. That's right, that is some good money to walk away with. So Fabiana Dorigo, she just happened to book her trip a couple days before, takes fourth place right behind fellow country goddess. Here's a look back, she gets some sizable air, lands right on the set and not able to Transfer the weight onto the next key. Here's a great drone shot. Well done, Corey and Axel. It's just beautiful imagery right there, showing you what it takes to keep it all together. And that's that. All right, let's set the stage. Trisha Mangan in her first finals here at the World Pro Ski Tour. She's going up against Kaya Norby in her first final this year. It's a battle of Norway versus USA. Kaya on the right, Trisha on the left. And who's got the advantage, Kev? Randy Pat's today. about to begin the to start. Mangan with the advantage on the blue side. So Kaya Norby knows that if she can get out quick, not let her stretch it out. Norby, no stranger, come out behind the start doors. Mangan was with us last year. Who's going to be on the top step of the podium with three, four, two built into the door opening on the blue side? Matt Rogers, right there. Lexer on the blue course side, keeping things running smooth up there. On track to go, nice and it's hard by Mangan. Yeah, Kaya Norby not far behind, timing it as close as she could to get now down the pitch. They go Norby and Mangan, the U.S. ski team, touching down first. Norby knows that down here on the red side, can she just let the skis run? Minimum angle, edge angle, let the skis do the work. Glide, try to press it. Looks like Mankin looking too strong for Norby on that blue side as she's coming to the jump with about a gain advantage. Not going to happen today for Norby. It's going to be Trish Mankin on the top step of the podium today. Almost into the spec bench. She goes, hands high in the air. Hug from each other. Kaya Norby in second. Trish Mankin in first for the ladies. Yeah, she's super psyched. Whoop, whoop. $20,000 to get you super psyched. Yeah, Trisha Mangan rocking figure 11 bib right there. Look at that smile. That's beautiful work. I know that David and Martha, your parents, are super happy along with your twin brother, William. And that was all yours. That's just tenacious focus, looking down the hill towards the finish line saying, get out of my way, Gates. I'm taking this victory here at Taos for the World Championship. And she's done just that. Put your hands together, folks, one more time for your ladies champion here on day number two, Trisha bounce, Megan. Bounce, bounce, almost to the fence as we go back to the top to settle up the battle for the consolation round. Patrick Kinney with a seven-tenths of advantage, the max differential over the Spaniard. Alex Fuente to see us. So, Kenny goes to the red side. We're going to toss the break, and we'll be back with the men's final here in the Mazda Presents GS portion of the Taos World Pro Ski Tour Championships.
what a beautiful view. Welcome back for you folks that are watching online. What a beautiful day we've had and a wonderful weekend as well. Happy Easter to all y'all. That's tomorrow, but right now we're going to settle things up into third and fourth place. It's going to be Alex Puente to see us and Patrick Kenny going first. Kenny has a .7 advantage over the Spaniard. Then we're going to go to the final final. Final throwdown showdown is going to be between George Steffi and Jan Zabastran. What's the differential there, Kev? So, Kenny with a max differential, 0 .700 for the U.S. ski team athlete. And his fellow ski team athlete will be following George Steffi and Zabastran. Steffi will have his work cut out. Zabastran with a 3-5-8 advantage. That'll be the final run of the day. Super exciting here. We're super excited to be back at Taos on his Bluebird Day to wrap up our tour championship and the world championships all at one time so make sure you don't go anywhere once this runs over we're going out to the podium you know what we haven't done yet we haven't seen because we're sitting inside looking at most of you if you can hear us put your right hand in the air can you hear us okay that one person can hear us uh, thank you two well, you, you have three. to listen to hear <laughs> <laughs> who's got their ears on come on back come on back anybody hear us uh, well yes <laughs> If, if you're not paying attention to us, you don't speak our language, the first person across the line this time is going to win. That's what's happening. Thanks to Mazda, Celsius, and CB Sports, Jägermeister, Seiko, and Revo. A million thanks to the entire Taos Ski Valley staff, from the parking lot attendant to the person that cleans the toilets, to the cooks, to everybody that's had a part in making this event happen. That's right, because you know what? I, at one point in my life, was a janitor. You know, you just, you haven't lived. been there. Yep. And I, I got, I got my start hanging banners and carrying zip ties and duct tape. And I lost three Leathermans along the way. So I uh, r really appreciate all the course working that's been going on out here. Well, Thank you. That's an expensive loss. <laughs> <laughs> all right. We digressed in here. <laughs> it's been a long, long week here. I, it's been a great week. I like what I'm seeing on that helmet right there. At Puente Ski. Puente Ski. You can find him. Ooh, look at on, the wind whipping ooh. over Kachina Peak. What a beautiful shot as we get ready for the consolation round. Red There's Red Tomas Red up there with his Red Red CB Red Red Grateful Dead shirt on right now. It's all business. Patrick Kenny with the advantage. He'll have a huge advantage on the red side. Out on track goes Patrick with that seven tenths at him. The Spaniard to see us will be chasing on the slower of the two courses. He knows he's gonna have to do something special. Oh, to see us get the trouble up there. Patrick touches down oh, with a huge yeah. pair. And he's throwing it down the hill. Kenny got a seven tenths advantage. He's on the faster course. Don't want to make any mistakes. Into the pitch they come. It's gonna be Kenny heading for the bottom jump with the advantage. And we know how the red course stretches it out. It's gonna be US ski team mentor Patrick Kenny skiing from my alma mater. At attach across the line. Hands in the air to see us chase us across the finish line on his course. Patrick Kenny. Super psych, 6300 or excuse me, $4,500 richer, and to see us takes three grand. Whoop, whoop, whoop. Nice job, Patrick Kenny. See if he can't throw a little good luck up to George Steffi, fellow teammate. And I'll tell you what, one of my favorite racers of the year is to see us. And you can see offsetting his, uh, his turn gets a little wide there, tries to reset it, and says, hello, gate, goodbye, pole. <laughs> Leaves that pole behind, and that's the nature of the beast. Look at the air that Kenny got right oh, there. He wasn't taking anything for granted here against the CST. He was sending it big time. So, okay, that up. Yeah, 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 yeah. All right, folks, this is it for all the marbles. This is coming down Thank to it. George Steffi, Mustachio, Thank doing it for so Stratton Mountain School. Team USA on the left hand side. On the right, who do we have, Kev? Uh, we've got John Zabastrand, a rookie here on tour, both these rookies. So Steffi really has his work cut out for him when Zabastrand's doors open up. A point three five eight advantage here. The last run of the day here at Taos in the World Red Championships ready. of Pro Ski Racing. Blue course ready. And it's showtime. Here we go. Randy Patson and Matt Rogers watching on. They start the cadence. Lights will go to green on our track. They go. So Steffi with a strong start to try to keep it real here. Three five eight for Zabastrand. Zabastrand out in the soft snow a little bit up there. George Steffi right there with him on the blues. Oh, Zabastran gave it away. Two straight off the oh. bottom bump. George Steffi going to the top of the podium. He and Patrick Kenny, U.S. ski team members. Tough break for Zabastran. Got too excited, too straight. Here comes Steffi looking over his shoulder. Yeah. yeah. What a big win today. Look at Kenny and, and, and Steffi. 
met those two playing pool at racer registration, and here they are on the podium, super psyched. Where is Zavistran? We gotta get a replay on that. Look at him, super psyched. We're gonna back it up here. Here they come, out of the course, at the top. And Steffi had a strong start, putting the pressure on Zabastran. Both rookies, Z Zabastran in trouble on that third gate. Puts it out in the soft snow, starting to bounce around. Into the next gate before the jump. Let's see what happens off the jump here. Did he go too straight? Lands, oh, straddles too straight. And he grabs his helmet going, what did I just do? Gave away a whole lot of money. George Steffi yeah. going away with $20,000. We're going to move it out to the podium and give those big money checks out. And some Seiko watches and spray some champagne. Super cool here. Finals wrapping up the towels. Ugly, good time. Look at Steffi. That's a great finish shot right yep, there. That's the Viagra, Viagra across the finish line. Stiff and in charge by Steffi. Woo! Nice job, Steffi. Excellent work, big smiles. He got cameras in his grill. We'll take a small break and get back at you in just a bit with our awards. Thanks for tuning in. Hey, you see any trash on the ground? Pick it up. Let's keep Taos nice and clean. Also, $10 raffle still available with Kachina Sports. We'll be back in just a bit.